Welcome to What's Your Screw, where we tell stories, share experiences, and get inside the minds of artists, athletes, creators, and musicians. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 30 of What's Your Screw. Today's guest is Eric Spitz. He is a former collegiate athlete, a marathoner, a blogger, a man of many talents. He's a super <laughs> interesting guy. I've read most of your blog posts. Awesome. And you seem to have a very uh, unique take on uh, the world and life. So I think that this is going to be a good conversation. Oh, for sure. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, thanks for coming. I, it, you yeah. missed it when Eric got here. Like It was like that scene in Jumanji <laughs> when like it starts monsooning like instantly. Yeah. <laughs> like raindrops the size of golf balls. And like it, like as soon as you got here, it probably started, right? And then you just oh, came yeah. and he was just soaked. So oh, he's yeah, dry now. For sure. Uh, there was a charging rhino and everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you said you like movies, so I, I'm a big movie guy. So maybe yeah. we'll even have some good uh, movie conversations. Oh yeah, for sure. Here too. What is your favorite movie? Oh man, weird place uh, to start. But yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, so let's see, some of my favorites: Pulp Fiction, <sighs> Donnie Darko. Yes. There will be blood. There will be blood's an amazing. Oh, I love that movie. Pulp Fiction. I'm a huge. Tarantino is my favorite man. of all time. So yeah. Oh, it's it's a classic. I mean, okay. like, um, it's. It never gets old. I was just revisiting that one with my brother Joel a few weeks ago. Mm, um, so it's a classic rewatch. I mean, you 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 pick up on something new every time you watch it. That's yeah, what's you so take cool something about it. a little bit different away. Have right. you read like all the fan theories on it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I forgot what it was. Like the, I was watching this one thing about you know all the hidden gems mm-hmm. and everything in Pulp Fiction and and across all Tarantino movies, and it's super interesting. Like, um, I guess he uses, like, he, cause he uses Big Kahuna Burger in that yeah. one, but it's like, he uses it, I think, in Reservoir Dogs as well. And it's just like a made up burger really? place that kind of he invented, but it's like within his world of his fictional, like, yeah. universe. Like, yeah. like there's the MCU and like, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, interesting. it's interesting stuff. Um, yeah, no, it's it's crazy, and then and then showing all the little tidbits on Pulp Fiction, and like stuff that I never really picked up on, or like I thought I knew, and it's like holy crap. Yeah, and all these like there's like insane theories about the movie, and like what, what it's really they about. Say it's in his, it's like uh, his soul. It's in yeah, I guess Mar- I guess the most the leading theory, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but mm. or someone will, I'm sure, <laughs> um, that Marcellus Wallace sold his soul to the devil. And he's been trying to buy it back ever since. And he sends Vince and Jules to go get it. And when they get the briefcase, the com is 666. Mm. Right. Um, and, you know, like everyone's like in awe when they open it, but they never show it. Like, you know, right. it's just this beautiful, it's a soul. <laughs> um, and huh. then, you know, like when that guy's in the bathroom and comes out with a hand cannon mm-hmm. and it shoots him and like the bullets that go through him. They're right. like because they're doing the Lord's work, like yeah. divine intervention. Well, there's, doesn't oh, he have like yeah. a band aid right there? And it's like he does. Yeah, it, it really does. Like, sucked yeah. his soul oh. out of the back because like his. It always that, has that. Because I never shows explain that, really, but it the shows it close up too. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a point to shoot him from behind like that. That's a good point. And uh, yeah, and then not to mention like Jules like does that Ezekiel twenty five seventeen, mm-hmm. which isn't right. even a real Bible verse. But I know it's, <laughs> it's funny. He 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 definitely like Tarantino definitely um changed up that verse. That's quite so a bit. It, uh, not even remotely <laughs> like close to what it originally. Really. Was, I mean, yeah. it sounds badass when he says it, and you would believe oh, that it's incredible. Be in the Bible. I would say that ninety percent of people who watch that movie don't know that t- that's not the real verse. Right. No. The only not. reason I do is because I'm weird <laughs> and dig into movies and like, I'm trying yeah. to figure out what the hell it's about. <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's a good film for sure. First time I saw that, I goes, "This is." so dumb i I made him watch it first of all (laughs) yeah he made me watch i was like and then because i said the same thing after i watched it the first time and i've watched it maybe two or three more times and i was like oh this is actually a pretty cool movie oh for sure i mean it's it's one of those that all comes together because it's it's obviously non-linear it hops around a Mm -hmm. lot and Mm -hmm. you're just like what's going on Mm -hmm. like okay well and look at the cast too it's such a strong uma thurman Mm -hmm. um sam jackson uh, you got john travolta John travolta travolta bruce willis uh, the, the guy who plays Marcellus Wallace, he's a great actor. I can't think of his name uh, yeah. offhand. But, I mean, I, and I love Uma Thurman. My favorite movie of all time is Kill Bill. Wolfie. Oh, like, yeah. dude, oh, I, huh? Wolfie. Mr. Wolf. <laughs> oh, mi- oh, Mr. Wolf. Um, I like him. Yeah, the guy uh, from Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of his name for the uh, life of me right now. I know what you're talking Mr. about. Mr. Wolf's char- character is incredible. And, it's just, and that's one of Quentin's most extended scenes next to death proof i would say he had a long run in death proof but yeah which really isn't his i think that's an eli Roth film yeah it was it it was i'm trying to remember what that one was like he how did it go it was like there's films like that where it gets kind of dicey because like i know like true romance he wrote it but he didn't direct it Hmm. and i yeah i think you're right with with death proof like it's it's 
how did it go? Like he, I think I'm pretty sure he directed it, but he like, I don't know. I think there may have been other writers involved or something. I think it was something like that. Like they just let him like oversee the movie and like put his two cents in or something like that. And I think, and I could be wrong. The guy who wrote or directed, um, Death Proof mm-hmm. is the guy. I think his name's Eli Roth, the guy who plays the Bear Jew in Inglorious Bastards. Right. So he's friends with Quentin, and that guy's also a writer. So I think yeah. he consulted him and said, "Hey, but that's a great movie too." It um, is. Death yeah. Proof. It's and it's funny too because when you dig into different directors, like you notice that they have particular actors that they love mm. using because they'll be it's incredible in so many of their films. And no I one f- does that more than I feel I was, like yeah. more than Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah. He has his, say, like, there, he yeah. has his people who he loves using. Yep. And um I noticed that uh with the Cohen brothers as well, um because I I dug into their films too. Like they have um John Goodman in quite a few of their hmm. movies. Um I love John Goodman too, mm. but have him, the uh, Steve brothers? Buscemi, um, the Cohen brothers. They did Fargo, mm. No Country for Old Men. Um, oh, okay. They're yeah, they're great. They're um, I feel like their movies divide a lot of people. Like, they're very hit or miss with me as well. Like either, I don't know. Either I can't get into them, or like I'm hanging on every word. Mm. So what do you think of like, Old Country for or No Country for Old Men? What's your thoughts on that movie? I haven't watched it in a while, so I'd have to rewatch it. Like, I'll be honest. When I first watched it, I really didn't like it mm. <laughs> because it it like. I wanted to like it really bad. It's a weird it's, movie. It is weird. And it, and it doesn't follow the traditional, like it's very, it's ambitious in certain ways. And it doesn't have that, like, I guess it doesn't have that feel good aspect to it. Cause it's very, it's, I was, the, what I was going to say is it's a very uncomfortable movie to watch, It is, but not because not like a, a horror film or a scary movie or something mm-hmm. where like, Oh, this is uncomfortable because of like the, it is just very, very uncomfortable. Like that scene where, Probably the best scene in the movie, in my opinion, when the uh, what the guy's foreign name and uh, the, the guy that's in James Bond, yeah, and he's um, in he's the one of the new pirates. I mean, incredible actor. Oh, Benedicci del Toro. Benedicci del Toro. Okay, when yeah, he, yeah. When yep. he goes in the gas station and he asks mm-hmm. like the guy like heads or tails. Have you seen oh, that? Yeah. That yeah, scene <laughs> is just so like it's just he so doesn't end weird. up killing him, does he? No, because yeah. he, he the gets... guy guessed right. <laughs> no, but, it's like, crazy. It's just uh, uncomfortable. Un- uncomfortable movie to watch it really is and i like, still don't really have an opinion on it i've I've only seen it the one time it's on right. netflix right it's on I, or it was i don't know if it still is i've seen it the one time i think it might be still on there because i've been meaning to rewatch it myself it's like, just so it's, weird it's I, it, it I, is and it <laughs> doesn't like it. climax like like i feel like at the end like and spoiler alert but like go watch <laughs> stop the podcast and go watch it if you don't but like when like i think if I remember correctly, just like the Llewellyn guy just like ends up getting killed in that motel or hotel or whatever. Oh, yeah. It just like, it like flattened out. You know what I mean? It oh, I know. Like it's, it's like you're rooting for that guy and everything, but it's like, it's kind of the moral of the stories that just like, um, you know, like people, I guess you got to keep up, you know, like you got to keep up with the times. Like people, even though they have their glory days, they get old and they yeah. get rusty. They get, mm, yeah. you know, they outgrow what they, what they used to be i guess spectacular at and everything and, and it's it's a dismal view yeah. i mean it, it's yeah. like it's depressing but it's just like i don't know it doesn't really have that feel good like hero aspect to the movie definitely yeah. because it's like this dude does some messed up stuff to people and he just kind of walks away yeah he does <laughs> like it's, he's a great great villain in that movie. yeah though. i know like there's no um that's what i'm looking for there's no like justice really it's no. just and then who's it? It's not um, Woody Harrelson. No, the, Isn't he in the it? sheriff. Who's the sheriff? Um, oh, I am uh, slaughtering. Mo- like, actors. oh, it's the guy. It's the guy from Men in Black. <laughs> yeah, the guy the that old plays guy. K in Men in Black. Oh, this is so bad. I feel awful. Normally, I'm on top of this stuff, but um, <laughs> I know you. Usually, I'm pretty good too, and like, I'm really good Tom? with faces and stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I wish we had somebody fact. I like that us. movie. <laughs> I had <laughs> high expectations for it because I remember it won like a lot of uh, Academy so Awards or oh, something, yeah. or it was nominated it's for a bunch of like, stuff. It's very like highly regarded. Um, it was a huge year for movies too because that came out the same year as uh, There Will Be Blood. I remember I was oh, talking to my friend Eli. about it. It's, it, I know it's it's insane because like uh, I'm trying to remember how it goes. I'm probably gonna butcher the facts, but I thought it was super interesting. But 
one of my friends I was talking to about it because those movies came out in the same year and mm. they were actually filmed in like the same location essentially. Oh, really? And there was one part to where they had to, I believe it was they had to delay production on No Country for Old Men because they were doing some like oil explosions and the things like that. And, and there was a burned. bunch of smoke in the air and they had really? to wait for it to, huh. from that movie. Oh, <laughs> really? wow. There will so be blood, wild. I would say, might even be more uncomfortable. I have only seen that once too. I really need to revisit these. Mm-hmm. Um, that is just a very uncomfortable <laughs> movie to watch. Like I've never felt, I think, so uncomfortable. And I watched it by myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, it was just, I, you haven't seen that, have mm-hmm. you? It is just It, so it is an bizarre. uncomfortable movie because it's just, you. I don't know, you realize like. It makes you hate human nature a I know, bit. you realize like what. <laughs> it's um, about like oil tycoons? Yeah. Yeah. It's Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis. He's a uh, savage. Um, why can't I think of his character's name? But yeah, his, um, yeah, I mean, it just really goes to show his integrity and. Or lack thereof. Yeah, 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 that <laughs> and better. you're just like, man, I was like, he's actually like pretty twisted. Like you're like sympathizing with him the yeah. whole time. He's so, like, man, you know, he's just trying to make it, just trying to do all this. But like, yeah, he's pretty corrupt. It's, it's a crazy <laughs> film. I, yeah. That's weird that, that both of those came out the same year because they have a very similar feel theme, mm-hmm. I feel like, that. They do. Like, you, yeah, God. Now, I think that, it was 2008. Like it was a really, I remember just good awesome year for movies is that really? funny how like th- like movies can have potential to be you know oscar nominees and all these things but depending on what other movies come out at that time can really negate oh, I know. the potential like that's crazy to i me. think about that quite a bit like, like there's I'm not like an all-time like, runner you know what i mean they should yeah maybe that should be a thing it's i know it's insane because like i was thinking i think it was 2016 when leo won his first oscar like he still had really crazy competition that right. year like, was that revenant, had, the like, revenant i think yeah, because he had, like, Matt Damon in The Martian. He had, like, um, I want to say Brian Cranston and uh, oh. it called Trumbo or Tr- – What is that about the one, the one we talked – like, the girl on the computer? Is that Was that that movie or no? Uh, what movie was that? The, uh, it won a ton of awards. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I, I think he falls in love with, the like – Joaquin Phoenix? Oh, uh, is it her? Yes. <laughs> I love that I movie. didn't see that one. That but I heard fantastic. it. I heard it was Oh, weird. add it to your Was list. that Brian Cranston? Was that, that wasn't Brian Cranston. He looks Phoenix like Brian Cranston. Really? Kind of. Yeah. Like in his early Breaking yeah, yeah. Bad days at the stash. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see I, Breaking Bad? Oh, I love Breaking oh, yeah. Bad. That's, that's probably one. one of my favorite dramas. Now, what is the premise of Donnie Darko? Because it's on my Netflix queue, and oh, I see a lot of people bash it like on the internet. Wait, who, is that a, that's not a Nolan film, is it? No, it's a, uh, I'm forgetting her name, but it was like her debut, and I, I don't think either. she's done much since. Really? Like it was a fantastic debut, hmm. and I think everyone expected higher things from then on. But I don't know what else she's done. But um, yeah, no, it's it's great. Essentially, like basic premise of it is um, uh, basically Jake Gyllenhaal's character and everything. Like he's a pretty twisted kid like suffers from like mental illness and things like that and all these different issues. Mm. And he, I don't know. He like hallucinates these different things about how this like, it's like rabbit thing is basically like telling him the world's going to end and all this stuff. And like, Mm. so it's just, it's a, I don't, it's, it's really hard to describe. Like, it's kind of about like, you know, just space and time and just like, and different, it's so hard to like actually like describe. I, it's it's crazy because it's it sounds bad saying this because it's I regard it as one of my favorite movies because I can't remember a movie that I've been so like captivated by and <laughs> so in love with. But I've I've really only like sat down and watched it once. But like but I absolutely loved it and I've been meaning to go back to it. And it was just really? like and it sounds bad, but like you know it's just like I feel like if it's one of my favorites, I should have seen it like uh-huh. a thousand times. Yeah, but yeah. it's just like so yeah. It's but it's. Oh, it's fantastic though. Like I've been meaning to rewatch it forever, but then I just keep adding movies to my watch list. Of well, there's this weird <laughs> thing going on right now too with like the where the digital era is, and um, because I have kind of shiny object syndrome and like I'm attracted mm-hmm. to seeing new things. You know right. what I mean? But at the same time, I rewatch a lot of my favorites only for the sole fact that I own them on DVD. Because if you think, mm-hmm. you know, when we were all you know if you if you go back 10 years you know in of our generation and our because we're all pretty close in age right um 
when you wanted to see a movie or you had a movie you liked, you would just buy the DVD because there was no, oh, you can just, right now, you can type in a movie on YouTube and rent it for like $3 and right. you have it in Ultra HD for 3 bucks, automatically returns itself. Oh, yeah. And, or, you know, people obviously pirate movies. There's no shortage of ways to get this stuff. So mm-hmm. people don't buy DVDs anymore. Yeah. So th- the the effort level it takes to go revisit a movie, if it's not on Netflix, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's, it's not like I have the Batman trilogy and I own every Tarantino movie. They're on my bookshelf. So if I want to fall asleep to something or mm-hmm. want to relax, I'll just throw it in. Yeah. But now if you don't own some of these movies, it's kind of strange. It makes it hard to revisit them. Kind of like what we're talking about. It does. Yeah. I know. It's it's so weird because so many people have been, you know, constrained to what's on Netflix and everything. And Mm. a lot of people don't really branch out further than that. Like, you know, I'll tell someone about something like, this is a great movie. You need to watch it. Well, is it on Netflix? I'm like, (laughs) no, it's actually not like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I, I guess, wait till it comes right, on yeah, there. Yeah, Eventually, yeah. I was like, I don't think it will. Start tweeting Netflix. Yeah, so probably some of the movies we like will never make Netflix because they're yeah. too, uh, like, cult following. Yeah, which is, exactly. Yeah. But. Very cool. <laughs> well, you, you got good taste in movies. You're well, a thanks, Tarantino man. guy. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love Tarantino. People either love it or don't get it. I, yeah, I, exactly. I don't think there's a hate. There's just They just don't understand it. Oh, yeah, You know what sure. I mean? His, yeah, his movies definitely, like... Um, it takes a select person to like it because they're very, they're very gory, they're very out there. They're, mm. you know, they're. Um, I love how they're all like a tribute to, like he's yeah. always paying homage to something, and that oh, I, yeah. I find a deep appreciation in that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Tyler really turned me on to Quentin Tarantino. Love yeah. It. And I have become a big fan of his. Mm-hmm. Like Inglorious Bastards is awesome. <laughs> oh, it's Django. so good. I think honestly though, Hateful Eight because oh. I had it such a different perspective just watching the trailer of how the mm-hmm. movie was going to go mm-hmm. and that it took place in that haberdashery, like the whole yeah. movie. I was like, that was so bad. We talk about oh, that Oh, I know, lot. yeah. The best part about that, it, an entire it film, in one room. Yeah. two hour whatever, took place in in one oh, yeah. setting. How chan- Imagine so telling cool. a story that captivating in one room. Yeah. That movie is so incredible for that. It, oh, it really is. It was actually originally written as a screenplay, which makes sense. Mm. because it's, Oh, really? Yeah. So that's but, probably um, why then. He wrote right, it as yeah. a screenplay? I think he did initially, and then he... I'm forgetting the story on it, but, you know, turned somehow it I turned into a movie. Really? But, um, no, it's great. It's uh, I love movies like that. So I'm actually making a list for every movie I've watched this year. Just, you know, they span the decades, span the genres, yeah. and everything, just ranked in order, which is really hard to do because, it's like, obviously on certain days, I'm going to mm-hmm. like one movie over the other. Mm-hmm. It's hard to compare, you know, a really, you know, grotesque, like, horror movie with, like, you know, against a kid's movie or like, you know what I mean? Like, like comparing film, which one's yeah. better, you know, it's really hard to do, but like, it's fun. Um, actually at the top of my list, so is, uh, 12 angry men, the original one. Hmm. Uh, it's, and, and it just made me think of that because I mean, 99% of the movie takes place in one room and it's all focused on dialogue. Really, I love movies that. like that to, and, and to keep you like interested and to keep you like hanging on to every word and what's going to happen. That takes a, like, you got to be a really good writer oh, to do that. <laughs> it's, I think that's the beauty of it, though, because it's, you're, you know, it's a, it's a, a jury of individuals and they're trying to decide the fate of another <laughs> person, you know, based off minimal information of what they've been given. Really? And it's, it's cool because Someone like, tell me about that. yeah, because you're essentially in the room with them because you don't really have much information either. Mm. And then people will be arguing different points and then they're like, wait a minute, like, and then it, the thought would come in your head, like, this guy just, like, contradicted himself, or he just, like, poked a hole in this guy's mm. argument. And then a guy will, like, call him out on it for that exact same thing. Like, well, hold on. So you're know, there like, with, like, their their thought process. It, it is. It, like, yeah. it flows so well. Like, it's like, man. I was like, oh, well, it's it's no surprise it's regarded as, you know, one of the greatest movies of all time. You know, definitely, like, top of the list for the Criterion hmm. Collection. So, like. I need to watch that. When is the oh, original? Really Where is that from? Where is it from? No, like from, the 80s. It, it's one. from like the 50s. They oh, made really? a they made a remake in the 80s, I think. And the um, original's better, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, hey, is yeah. that well, a Netflix? I haven't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'm I'm actually trying to remember. It's I think I rented that one from Amazon Prime or hmm. something, but yeah. That's usually my go-to if it's not on Netflix. Yeah, and just, they usually yeah. have it. 12 Angry Men. Yeah, I just love movies that don't end the way they're supposed to. That's yeah. my favorite thing. That's why The Bastards was so good for me because mm-hmm. the la- with the first time you see that, the last thing you expect, spoiler alert. <laughs> if you Stop the seen podcast. It, just, yeah, <laughs> come on. Um, is Hitler to die. 
Yeah. Like like <laughs> by a group of renegade Jewish uh, guerrilla <laughs> warfare style fight. Right. Like like when that happened, I'm like you just there's no way you, <laughs> you change history like, you can't do that no and yeah. he did and yeah, i'm like straight up what did. like and that's why i love movies like that and like however you feel about the mcu like infinity war spoiler alerts you know um <laughs> that ending i'm like it's good they yeah they, it, the, the last thing you ever expected marvel to do was to kill off half the universe at the end of that movie mm -hmm. and you know, take the whole universe of that movie aside. I enjoyed that. Finally, it was something I never expected to happen, and that's yeah. the kind of movies that I'm personally really attracted to. The like shocker effect thing. I again, love like, that. Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> and somehow it still holds value when you rewatch them. You know, it's just that. Excitement, oh yeah. You know, you, so. Yeah. Exactly. No, for sure. Oh, man, well, maybe awesome. let us know in the comments your favorite movie. That was a good start. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was a good start. That was a very good start. <laughs> now, are you going to put your uh, movie list on your blog? Actually, I really should. You should. I've been I've been trying to figure out like different. Um, topics to go about i've been meaning to write about each marathon and everything mm -hmm. i got them all in my head of what i'm going to write about and everything and they're actually super interesting stories like i'm excited to um write about them i guess we get the first story here and everything of uh you know of them and stuff but like yeah no um i think it would be cool to include movies on there for sure it's a big passion of mine well, let me interject um, and give some background because yeah. so oh yeah so no, people are sure. familiar with you so when did you start this venture so eric wants to run a marathon in all 50 states correct yep all right so how did this idea come about and you know where are you at right now just give give the people a little background for sure that's a um, super i don't even where does that idea <laughs> even come from you know yeah no definitely um and to be honest i was trying to think of the source of it myself and i'm like when did I get inspired to do this? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, but uh, the best answer I can come up with was it all started when I did. So I did my first marathon. It was, um, it was June of 2015. Yeah. June of 2015. Um, I met up with some of my college buddies. We met up in Saginaw and everything. And they're like, yeah, let's go for a run and everything. Old time's sakes. Mm -hmm. it's like, cool. Sounds good. And then um, my buddy Tyler was just like, hey, like we got this idea of, um, you know, running the Charlevoix Marathon. You know, it's rated in Runner's Magazine's like the top 10 small town marathons. Huh. Like it's, you know, right in Michigan and everything like and it's a Boston qualifier. Like, why don't we train? And this was back in April. I think we were meeting for a fantasy baseball draft. So the so, yeah, that would make sense. It was like end of March, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. And um and they're like, yeah, like it's end of June. So I literally had like a month and a half to prepare, but I was like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, yeah, that sounds good. And I was just like really fired up and like excited to do this. I was like, I've always wanted to do a marathon. Like I never could through college because of just like, I mean, I'm just training year round yeah. and competing at such a high level. Like it's really hard to squeeze in a marathon because obviously they take a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. So, you don't okay. just squeeze in a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> just like well, apparently you do there. with a month and a half of preparation. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Um, like pencil it in your schedule. But uh, <laughs> what did I, that? What did that preparation look like uh, for so, anybody who wants to hack a marathon training? Program yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you definitely have to go about it strategically. Like, um, and to be honest, like I was kind of clueless about it as well. And like my friend Tyler, actually, like he's a whiz with uh training much better than I am, honestly. But, uh, he, he put together like a practice plan for everybody, you know, kind of gauged our weekly mileage and everything. And it was just like, okay, like, you know, um, fun running fact, you should never increase your mileage by more than 10% per week. Mm -hmm. I break that rule all the time yeah, <laughs> because I get caught in binds, but you're not supposed to do that, yeah. you know, to prevent injury and things like that. So, um, but I think at that time, I mean, like, I wasn't running a ton, but like I've been running for so long. I, it, it wasn't hard for me to get back yeah, into a good yeah, pace yeah, and everything. Sure. So I honestly started, um, and this is very low for marathon runners. I feel like if you're trying to do a marathon, you should run much more than this because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because this is not what I would advise, you know, regular people to tackle or do. But I honestly only run, I think like, um, I want to say anywhere from like depending on the, on what like part of the training I'm in yeah. anywhere from 30 to 50 miles a week, which is extremely low, right. very low for weekly mileage. When I'm running something that's 26.2 <laughs> miles, that's, <laughs> like, that's literally like half my, oh, of yeah, what I do in the, the entire yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. It's obviously like you should be running much more than that, but, um, <laughs> and ideally I like to, but, um, so it just depends. It's situational depending on the person. I've met runners who had, you know, 
weekly mileage of that and we're co- collegiate athletes, but they just, I don't know, low mileage works with low mileage, but high intensity or just like switching up with something really. Yeah. I mean, there is no cut and there's dry no, answer. Yeah. It, there's no one size fits all for, for, sure. for a training method. I mean, there's something that works for others. Some that doesn't, mm-hmm. um, but, what was I the mean, longest run you did before the, the marathon distance? <laughs> Honestly, 20 miles. Oh, so man. I was like, the last 6.2, I'm going to wing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it, it, it was just all new terrain to me. I was just like, I hit that 20-mile mark. I was like, this is the furthest <laughs> I've ever ran continuously. And I still got a 10K to go, yeah. 6.2 miles. Yep. I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> See, I want to do a marathon. I ran cross in high school. And okay. I still enjoy running. Yeah. Um, I want to give it a try. And I know there's a resource. I haven't implemented it myself, but um, in Tim Ferriss's The 4-Hour Body, he has a, uh, I think, a three-month plan for, uh, pretty, you know, really well laid out for mm-hmm. planning for, or, you know, training for a marathon. Yeah. Um, and I trust anything Tim puts out because he's meticulous in his research. So that yeah. might be a good resource oh, also for, sure. for anyone. Yeah. All right, so you had a month and a half. Yep, first which, marathon. which, like you said, that is accurate. Um, ideally, it should be three months. Essentially, marathons take six months out of you, okay. I would say, because it's three months training, three months recovery, honestly, oh. is what generally is the rule. Um, and yeah, after that first one, it's... Yeah, I was... <laughs> it took a lot out of me. Like, I couldn't do stairs for, like, a week. Do you have to, like, ease... Do you have to keep running after you did your marathon and, like, ease back yes, in mileage? you're, you're supposed to. What, okay. um, yeah, and I, I also broke that rule. And, and it's one of those <laughs> things I feel like experience is the best, you know, yeah. teacher for things because even though I say in my head and I know what to do, like, you learn pretty quick when you don't do that thing. Mm. Like, it just... It comes back to bite. Yeah. 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 I mean, cause I, cause after the marathon, I just kind of, you know, laid down, I hobbled around, (laughs) I just like slept or did something. And then said, I mean, all that lactic acid was building (laughs) up and like, and then it was so much worse later because I just like, I can't move. Yeah. (laughs) No kidding. But, um, I literally like the next day. uh, Yeah. Don't take any running advice from me for this first. He's not a guy. Because because this is the exact opposite of what you should do. Because literally the day after that marathon, I hopped in a car with my brother and we drove to North Carolina. (laughs) The day after. So I sat in a car all day. That lactic acid was building. And we we went to a grocery store. I'm like, I can't can't walk. (laughs) Like I literally got an Amigo there. (laughs) And I I filled it with beer and they like probably thought I was homeless or something. Oh, for sure. Here's this young fit guy. Oh, you can't wait. All right. Okay. Like, oh, sure. You just ran a marathon. Yeah. Yeah, Get out of here. You're drunk. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Boozer. So what was your time? Because you so it was a qualifying race and I read it on your blog. You qualified for um, Boston on the Charlevoix run. Is that correct? Yeah, so, um, yep, uh, qualifying time that year was right around, it was right around three hours and five minutes, which breaks down to, um, math, hold on, it breaks down right about to seven minute miles, um, which I know, like it, it's, you know, to any experienced runner and everything, like that's not like a, by normal standard, it's not like a strenuous pace by any means for for like anyone who ran collegiately and everything, but obviously, yeah, it's a complete... You know, it's a complete toss up when you're spreading over 26.2 miles. I mean, because I, I went into it not knowing what to expect. Were you Did you have the goal in mind for qualifying for Boston? I had it in my head, yeah. But like, um, and I was get I went back and forth because I get really excited some runs and like I would knock out and like keep a really good pace. Like I would, uh, I would focus on pace consistently when yeah. I ran and like keep track of it on my watch. And like, you know, I'd do like a 10 or 12 mile run and I'd, and I do it right around seven minutes or just under like qualifying yeah. pace and it feels good, but I'm just like, okay, I did that for 12 miles. I literally have to do that. Keep that up for over double the distance. Yeah, mm-hmm. Like, can I do that? Mm-hmm. And I, w- and I had doubt. I was like, I, you know, I've only been training for this for like a few weeks, like right. a month or month and a week or so at that point. So I was like, can I realistically keep this up? And I know there's obviously some factor that goes into it too like when you get in that environment and that competitive the magic nature, of race day yeah. it's it's yeah. crazy how that affects it but it really makes a difference so like people around um, you energy yeah oh yeah sure. it make, makes a huge difference 100%. so like um so yeah i i had that doubt and like i i thought it'd be cool to qualify but honestly i went into it like this is my first marathon i'm just gonna have fun yeah i'm just gonna see what happens like that was literally my first even attempt of running over 20 miles so it's like that's, that's impressive man 
I was like, you know, and, and I didn't realize how good my time was until I did some more marathons after that. Cause I was like, it was a really solid first marathon time. I did it in, uh, it was two hours, 47 minutes and 13 seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which broke down to, I think right around six thirty eight, six forty miles. Dang. Yeah. I was, how did you feel like, running it? I, I felt really smooth. Like, um, and that that wall is very real that they talk about. Oh, dude! <laughs> like, like set, yeah, I was I, gonna yeah. ask you about. Oh, it, you mentioned it in real. your blog. I think <laughs> you said like mile eighteen. For yeah, you do any form of long run. I don't think you. And like I've yeah. never ran that far. The first I ran is a half, but yep. it wasn't official half. Just just distance. Oh but, yeah, for sure. But the wall is a very real concept. It's a very real thing, it is, um, and you can't explain <laughs> it very easily. It's you can't really. It's um. It's. I've never like experienced anything like it. Like it was um. I hit it right around mile 17 or 18, which is about where typically people experience Dang. it. So it makes sense. It's just your legs almost just like it. I mean, they just feel like super heavy, almost that like they have a mind of their own in a weird way. Like they almost have like a, it's so hard to describe. It's almost like an electric current, like running <laughs> through them or something. It's weird. Like you feel every single part of your leg with every step and like it and your legs just feel super heavy mm. and it's just like and and like it just feels like you're just like even though you're still running it feels like a walk like yeah. it feels like you're just going so slow and that voice <laughs> in your head starts talking it does yeah <laughs> and, and it's, you gotta shut and, it down yeah no definitely and um and i definitely slowed down toward the end of it for sure but like the way i was doing it in my head you know i was definitely being very encouraging and you know the first half of it i think I was, I was killing it the first half of that race. I was going, uh, I want to say I was keeping it low sixes, like for my average. So I was doing the math in my head. I was like, I was like, I could pretty much run if I dropped it to right around eight minute miles or high seven minute Mm -hmm. miles on the way back, I'd still qualify. Really? So I was just like, so just giving myself that encouragement. I was like, I won't drop that hard, but I was like, it's, it's a good. And you had some cushion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some cushion to, Yeah. And, you know, I was like, I'll just going to hang on, see, see where it goes. And I just kept going and then, yeah, hit that wall. And those miles just kept on dropping, like to <laughs> dropping the other way, not yep. in the fast way. But <laughs> like, I think it, it, you know, it started subtly with, um, I think I can, you know, like high seven minute miles to like low eight minute miles. to I think I even had like a nine or mm. nine thirty mile. Like they were really dropping mm. toward the end. But I was like, I just got to finish this thing, man. Yeah. Like, I was just like, yeah. I'm so close. Like, I'm doing really well. Like, I just got to, I just got to, tr- like, trudge this thing in. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, in your blog, you talked about, like, kind of separating mind and body. Yeah. When you're, like, running a long marathon like that. Yeah, it's, um, that's really the best way to describe it. Like, any of those longer races, I used to keep that mentality running even just a 10K. Mm-hmm. Um, you really have to, like, zone out and be out of your mind for a little bit and, it's it's so hard and weird to describe but like you just have to develop a rhythm and just it's almost like you're in a meditative state like you're yes. you're just conscious flowing. you're awake mm-hmm. and you're aware but you're not full. it's the best way to describe it is if like you're on a long drive and then all of a sudden you just kind of come back to and you're that like, is it, that's how did exactly I get here? You know what it. I mean? Like, it's just like, yes. Oh, I didn't realize I already drove an hour. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> For me personally, I, the only way to get there is like nothing under, f- under five miles. Like it's gotta be like a five plus mile run. Mm-hmm. And, um, like an out and back, something where, like where I can like just coast straight. Like if I'm turning a lot, mm-hmm. I kind of get out of that. Mm-hmm. And then like, listening to the same song on repeat because well obviously like in high school you could never run with music but like now i right. do it and listen to the same song i try and pick a song that has a like bpm cadence to yeah the cadence that i want to run no that's, and then that's I good repeat 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 over and over again and then like i f- feel like that's for me the best way to get into that like like totally zoned out and mm-hmm. i find it's a very meditative and creative state like it's it i get out of my own head and i find it to be an extremely healthy like form of meditation for me it, it really is um i know i feel like there's a. I i mean because i meditate as well like um i try to every day i don't always get to it but um but yeah it, it makes a big difference and i feel like there's almost a misconception on meditation like you know people imagine you just have to sit you know close your eyes and just do nothing mm-hmm. or just think of nothing but i mean you can meditate while walking meditate mm-hmm. while running it's you can it's it's just getting into that that mindset of um 
the best way to describe it is like you're just almost separating yourself and I, I have this guided meditation app um, that I use once in a while called Headspace. Mm-hmm. Do, and you they pay, just got, do you pay for that yearly then? Um, so I use the, the free one, mm-hmm. but you can pay for like very strategic forms of meditation, which I might do. It's eventually. a very popular app. It's, a lot it's of people really love it. great. It's, it's, I'd definitely recommend it to anybody. But um, yeah, like the, the best way to describe that and mindfulness overall is just like you're, you're sitting on a hill and you're just watching the cars go by. Like, you're not trying to stop your thoughts or do anything like that. You're just kind of just being, you know, being at ease with them and just letting them flow. Being present. Yeah, Yeah, just being, sure. like, present and just kind of, like, observing from an outside view and from a distance. You can't try and stop thinking. You know, I think that right. that's an endless loop of frustration. You just have to... Oh, for sure. You know... Be. Be. Yeah. And... Um, no, exactly. And I think that the answer is different for a lot of people. And mm-hmm. the best way to get there is just to start. And even if that's closing your eyes and sitting in a dark, quiet room for right. 10 minutes, don't you don't have to try and not think about anything. You can mm-hmm. just, just sit there and with your eyes closed and you, you'll figure, you know, I right. guarantee you'll come out of that feeling better than you did when you went in. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. So, um, now going back to the Headspace app, because I've yeah. downloaded that and used yeah. it. And I think you get like what twelve Two days. Weeks, yeah, it's something, it's something like so that. So do you just yeah. restart it from the beginning when you get to the end, or do you use I, like I'm the? I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, I think you, you can go back it, and though? revisit them. Do you use just the later um, um, days? Yeah, over I mean, again. Uh, or what? Yeah, like uh, I think you can revisit those as many times as you want, but mm-hmm. um, and it's essentially the same thing throughout them. I think they just explain a little bit less as you keep going because you should you understand be aware and yeah. know mm-hmm. what the process is and everything. So essentially you could just re- keep repeating that last day and everything. I think towards the end they do certain themes and kind of give you a tease of it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so if there's like a certain theme in there you want them to do, like if you're really anxious or just something like that, I think they cater more towards that for certain days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really helpful. Um, I found it extremely helpful. And it's it's crazy, you know, all the mm-hmm. studies about meditation mm-hmm. as well. Just, I mean, no one would think that just you know sitting and just you know, um, and just uh, being at ease with your thoughts and um, focusing on your breathing yeah. would actually like. It, it physically makes changes to your brain. Mm-hmm. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's insane. It's incredible. I uh, saw a thing. You know who Wim Hof is? Are you familiar with him? Uh, like sounds this familiar. Dutch dude. This is your homework, man. If you take <laughs> dude, one thing home, homework. this is your homework. Okay. This Dutch dude. Well and worth he your time. Is, yes. He is crazy. He's got this breathing technique that's um, becoming super popular, and science is kind of really getting behind it and really backing it. Okay. And it's a, it's he has this course, but you can get his breathing technique for free off his website. You can send okay. it to you. And um, it takes literally like 10 minutes a day, but mm-hmm. it really just kind of opens up your, your brain and I think gets a lot of like uh, – carbon monoxide out of your system helps you okay. hold your breath for longer it's a very bizarre feeling it's very mm-hmm. bizarre it's almost like euphoric it's okay. like a lot of the if you do it correctly if you do it you know consecutively and correctly you can like almost kind of trip and like people that have done really? like mushrooms and acids <laughs> say they they t- have like little trips during this like this breath really? holding exercise and this dude has he's climbed like mount everest in nothing but like shorts and uh i have heard of this guy yeah it's funny i okay so i I interviewed a band a while ago who's who's very into like meditation and everything. Yeah. So we talked about this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like he does um you ever heard of like floating where you're like in you're in like this chamber like the hyperbaric like, chamber yeah, oh, the, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the like cry, the water or, like, yeah, the thing the float tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yep. he like works at a place that has those and he's like big into that. People uh-huh. have like psychedelic like, experiences in those. Yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. Like Very um bizarre. and he and he brought up that guy with, mm-hmm. and um and I was actually just gonna mention him right after that because he was like, Yeah, he brought up this crazy guy who like went up Mount Everest in shorts. And he stuff. swam he went to death alt- altitude in yeah. shorts. Yeah. He swam under I forget how long it was. I think it cut was a, a hole. football field. I th- I feel like, but that seems pretty <laughs> it, it could have been. He cut a hole. So he has this breathing technique and he can hold mm-hmm. his breath for however long. Jeez. Cut a hole in the ice, swam to uh, set a world record somewhere. But mm-hmm. the first time he did it in a practice run, his like eyes, his retinas froze, so he didn't know where he was going. So he like triangulated like his uh, like his just like his route and ended up finding the hole and it held his breath for like way longer ice. than he thought he was like gonna and do. Just it imagine for. like that's going insane. on a lake, like that's, that's what it was, and he drilled a hole to go down and a hole to come out. And he didn't wear like mm-hmm. goggles because it was just like a practice run. <laughs> it was like that's... retinas froze. So he said he started just doing triangles until he goes, someone will fish me out, and like someone like you know like fi- grabbed him down, but. But like you talking about like meditating daily, and I just mm-hmm. saw I follow him on Instagram. I love the guy, and um, 
he like made a post. He was like, oh, this lady goes to her doctor. Like, oh, I don't, like that meme thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> feel that. good. And the doctor goes, all right, well, I want you to, you know, meditate for 30 minutes every day. Go outside for 30 minutes every day. Exercise and um, just go be in nature. Yeah. And he goes, come back to me in two weeks. And uh, tell me how you feel. Obviously, they were hyperbolizing. <laughs> but like know. if people just get outside and like physically exercise and mentally exercise oh, yeah. and get out in nature and behind TV oh, and computer sure. screens, you'd feel 100 times more oh, better. Oh, you really do. Like, honestly, I wish more doctors would prescribe mm-hmm. that. Yeah. They would just like tell you, like, go outside more, like, use your phone less, yeah. like, meditate, like, eat healthier. Yeah. Like, just like, like do stuff like that. And then, like, instead of just being like, oh, yeah, I'll put you on, mm-hmm. on these pills mm-hmm. and I'll see you in two weeks. Like, have you yeah. say you run a lot and you feel great after you run? Mm-hmm. And that's a great source of physical exercise. But yeah. meditating or just sitting and being with your thoughts or going for a walk with no expectations but just to be with your thoughts yeah you feel so much better after like mentally exercising like that and it's so underplayed in society it really is and i feel like really a lot of people would with... benefit from that oh definitely and i think it, you come, can come out of these things with some very incredible um personal concepts goals ideas whatever you want to call them like um that page i had open in tim ferris's um not tools of titans Tribe of Mentors, mm, mm-hmm. you know, the question Tim Ferriss often asks is, what's a purchase of $100 or less that, you know, recently affected you, blah, blah, blah. And the guy goes, uh, I paid $4 to park my car in front of a lake um, <laughs> in Utah, went for a swim and came up with like a billion dollar business <laughs> idea. I think he's, 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 you know, this <laughs> so guy's a monster. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's a very interesting concept, you know. There is something very real about like go go you you know I've read your stuff go walk through the mountains and tell me you don't oh, yeah. feel different like and I'm not talking about altitude mm-hmm. I'm talking about like just that that hair Next standing up feeling nature. that you get mm-hmm. like there is an energy about that and there's a mm-hmm. reason you feel that way and there's a reason you feel good when you go for a walk outside in the fresh air um, it's a very real thing and mm-hmm. just because oh, it can't definitely. be measured or isn't measured as normally as um, things that are prioritized by modern science doesn't mean um, they don't have value. It's pretty simple. Something mm. feels good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that's going full circle here. I feel like that's almost how I got started on the, you know, 50 state marathon mm. ventures because mm. it's essentially combining, you know, two loves, my love for traveling, experiencing things and my love for running. And like, I'm all about the experience and just like, and so like, I feel like there's no better way to, to, you know, um, dive into the culture of a new place and like soak in the environment than literally running through it. Mm. Like, you know, feeling the wind in your hair, like, like smelling the air, like, and physically like running through this totally new area Mm -hmm. and just, Mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't know, like runners are definitely an interesting breed. I will tell you that because they're, um, I mean, people think they're probably insane for wanting to run for fun and do all that but i mean there's some of the nicest people you ever meet like they're just um the community yeah know, i mean strong. you ever go to like a 5k or something like that and talk to someone there i mean they're all just very pleasant mm. nice people who mm. just like you know ambitious um and that's kind of what it does for you i mean it, physical activity overall just gets the blood flowing to the brain it gets you thinking so much clearer like whenever i have an issue i'm stressed out about something i'm like all right, you know, calm down. Like, just go for a run real quick. And like, uh, and while I'm out running, it's so weird because like, you know, um, these like, you know, those thoughts will come to me. Like, I don't really know how to handle a situation or what to do and everything. And everything's just like so clear and simple. Mm -hmm. I'm just Mm -hmm. out running. Like Mm -hmm. I remove bias. I remove expectation. I remove my feelings. And I'm just like, this is what needs to be done. This is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just so clear and obvious. And it's like, why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's so weird. There was a quote of yours that I really liked. Um, Cause we, you know, my brother and I travel a decent amount. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was something about, and you might remember it. It was something about being a stranger um, oh. in, in, in something like that, being a stranger in someone else's environment. And there's yeah. something, you know, uh, refreshing about that. Yeah. And I, I just, I thought that that, you know, cause you're Thank talking you. about yeah. travel. I really enjoyed that. And I thought that that was <laughs> a relatable feeling that most people can choose to enjoy if, the, if they should. So thank please, you. you. Yeah. Know. It's funny. I actually, um, I penned that while I was isolated in a cabin up North. Mm. <laughs> mm. I like, I was kind of having experienced some writer's block and everything. And I don't know. I, I got talking to some friends and other people and everything. And like, You know, they were going on road trips and everything. And I was just like, you know, what? why don't I go on a short road trip? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I just, you know, 
basically was just saying, okay, where can I go over a weekend? I was thinking of like different, you know, parks in the Midwest, like maybe someplace in Ohio or something, but it was like, it's still pretty cold. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do a park right now. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around places for whatever reason, Cadillac, Michigan stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. Cause I had a, you know, a friend from there, you know, said it's gorgeous there. And I was like, I don't think I've ever really explored Cadillac. So like, I was just curious. I was looking at Airbnbs and I found one in Tustin, which is like right on the outskirts of Cadillac. And it was like, you know, log cabin, middle of the woods, no running water, no electricity. I was like, that sounds perfect. (laughs) And like, I straight up like, and I'm like, (laughs) and, and I, you know, like, uh, I, I, you know, very kind of out of my nature essentially to do not, not in regards to just like going and trying new things or being out in the wilderness and stuff, but like actually like going into a place with no running water and all this stuff, like, you know, didn't have much experience in it, but I was just like, I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, yeah, I, I just went there with like minimal supplies, like took the bare essentials and like some reading material and some notebooks. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, did some reading, did some writing by candlelight. It was fantastic. That, is that cool. sounds oh, awesome. I loved it. That sounds very cool. Um, and yeah, and that was one of the first things I, I wrote down because I got thinking about it. Yeah. And I don't know if I was just rephrasing a quote from, I don't know, that one of my friends said or what we were talking about. But it's it's so true, though. I mean, just it's it's some weird, refreshing feeling about going into a new environment and just being a stranger there. Like, you know, you don't really know anyone. No one really knows your name. You're just kind of there. Yeah. You you know like um, it's it's interesting. I feel like it's a very um, it can be like a vulnerable feeling, but an also yeah. like a, a huge sense of adventure and opportunity to mm-hmm. experience whatever you, you yeah. want to. You oh, know? definitely. Is yeah, because you can get co- so comfortable just living in the same area. Yep. For so long, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. Your routines are, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no. uh, to recap too, to make sure everyone kind of caught. Because we've been running around in circles. Mm-hmm. Pun. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Eric has decided he wants to run a marathon in all 50 states. So that's kind of how we got in this travel mm-hmm. thing. Um, and this was a question somebody submitted. So since we're here, yeah, uh, for sure. how far are you in that endeavor? How many states have you ran in? Yeah, so so far I've only done five. So got a ways to oh, go. Oh, only five <laughs> marathons in five states. But I mean, um, I got my sixth one coming up uh, next month in Nevada. I'm actually really excited for that one. Um, so like, yeah. Um, you know, I, my first marathon was, uh, like April of 2015. So I really haven't been doing that, you know, for very long. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm all about the experiences of them. Like, I think the earliest memory I can come of, like I was talking to individuals when I travel about different marathons they've done and everything. And they all sound so cool. So I'm like, okay, like, and I found this blog, I think it was on like active.com or something. It was just like best marathons to do in each state. Mm. And I was like, all of these sound so cool. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm just going to hit all of these eventually. And, uh, cause there's always, I was talking to my brother about this the other day. Like in my opinion, I mean, you can, you can find something special anywhere you go. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm. you know, what whatever it is you're looking for. Like, every every state and every location has something unique and cool to experience. Like, um, I remember my brother and I went to West Virginia uh, mm. last October. And every time I would tell people, they're like, why do you want to go to West Virginia? And all mm-hmm. this stuff. Honestly, it was one of the, like, most fun I've had on a trip. It was so, it, you, like, it is just like, I had a blast there, honestly. What like, do you recommend to do? So we hung out like by Shepherdstown, which is like a college town right by, cause we were exploring Harper's Ferry, the national park there. Um, and then we went to Antietam, the battlefield there. It's, there's a lot of history I yeah. mean, there. Um, Amer- a lot of American. Yeah. Uh, a lot history. of American history. And, um, and honestly, it, it was so crazy. We were just hanging out in Shepherdstown and we just like, I don't know. We, we got talking to this guy like outside this restaurant and he just said like, like muffins all over his shirt like it was like this apron thing and he's just like smoking out back he's got like a like a fu man shoe and yeah, stuff like nice. that but he just he was like such an interesting guy and he's just like oh like like um like we i think joel like my brother gave him like a head nod or something like that and then we just they kind of like Were you, oh, both of you guys have mustaches too at the time uh, he had his mustache at the time. I think I just had my beard. But, I would say um, there was probably just a mutual mustache respect <laughs> just, going on there. There's that mutual respect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> like we got talking oh, to him. Speak, and it's hey, like, I'm speaking of which I <laughs> felt a little 
it oh. left out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Now you feel Oh, now we can have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right. Eric pulls out some whiskey. <laughs> uh, for those um, of you listening, I have. Uh, Ken, I stole Kenny has this mustache necklace. Um, it's not even mine. <laughs> I, uh, and I don't even own a mustache. Yeah, necklace. I don't even. I cannot grow a good mustache. So it's, it's something I'm working on. But continue. I, I respect Muffin Man. Mustache. Muffin Man. Um, Muffin Man. But yeah, um, I feel like I'm just going in circles and going back and forth with random. Right. There's so many st- things People are I want to talk journey, about. Man, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a journey. You just gotta just gotta be there for the ride. But no, like. Um, yeah, he, he was like a super cool guy, mm. like recommended some places that we go. Mm-hmm. And then we randomly saw him later that night. Oh, and then nice. we met up with his friends. We just like went hanging out with his friends that night. That's like, so cool. And he just like included us in his group. Like we were just <laughs> old friends and like, I, it was so much fun. Like I became Facebook friends with the dude. Really? Like, yeah. No, he's a super cool guy. That's badass. Um, that is very it's, cool. You just, I don't know. That's just what I recommend to anybody who travels just to be like, in a sense get rid of expectations like yeah mm. you can have some rough ideas of what you want to do like if there's a certain place you want to check out don't make the list too long though yeah. make have a couple destinations in mind and then be like you know this is all i wanted to do today i'm satisfied i'm down for the rest whatever else happens i'm gonna let you yeah. know just let it, whatever else happen happen i was gonna ask you is that what you do when you go into a trip you kind of keep your schedule as open as possible so you guys can just take the day as it comes. Yeah. Um, you- for the most part, like, um, I w- like, uh, just thinking back to when I went out to Arizona, uh, for one of my marathons, like, um, so to give a broad overview, I've done five States. Mm-hmm. I've done Michigan, Massachusetts, Minnesota, state of Washington and Arizona. And I got Nevada coming up next month. Nice. And, um, they all offer something really cool mm-hmm. in my opinion. So like, but when I went out to Arizona, I went out there just by myself. Um, and it was actually crazy. Like, cause yeah, like I'm all about the experience and everything. Yeah. And so I, I met someone when I did the Boston marathon, um, the first year I met someone out there who was from Arizona and uh, we got talking she's really cool and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, she, and then I told her how I want to do a marathon in all 50 States. And she kind of has that, you know, rough goal too. And mm-hmm. everything. She's like, Oh, it's super cool. She's like, well, if you ever want to do one in Arizona, like, let me know and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I took advantage of that. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. just like, I was just like, all right. So then uh, I got looking into someone's like, oh man, this would be really cool to do. I was like, hey, is your offer still stand? You live like three hours away from this place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then she's like, if you want to make the drive or, or come out, it was like, yeah, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> so I literally stayed with someone who I met out in Boston. Um, and that's kind of how I want to frame it, as weird as that sounds. Like the people I meet when I travel or when I do these marathons, because be obviously I meet people from all over the world. Like, um, I kind of get that connection and everything and then just keep in touch. Mm-hmm. And then it's, and then it just makes a cool story later. Like I'll either stay with somebody who I met while traveling or at one of the marathons or like I'll stay in an Airbnb. Like I don't do the classic traveling thing where I book a hotel in mm-hmm. advance right. and do all that. Like, uh, yeah, I've, I've been getting into Airbnb the last few years and I absolutely love yeah, it. Cause one, option. it's cheaper mm-hmm. for two. I feel like it adds to the traveling experience because you're like literally staying in someone's house mm-hmm. <laughs> just like, yeah. and just, you know, like getting to know them, like knowing their story. And mm-hmm. like, it's, it's super cool. It's, it's such an awesome idea that the world's kind of come to that, mm-hmm. to where yeah, people are sweet. opening up their home to literally complete strangers. Yeah. And it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's really cool. Now that you qualified for like the Boston marathon and you keep running these marathons. Are you, are you qualified for pretty much any marathon that you want to apply for or what? For the most part. Yeah. So there you can, the bigger ones like Boston, like you have to qualify for, you have to run a certain time. Um, some of them like Chicago, it's like a, what they call like a lottery entry. So like yeah. it's, it's, it's weird how it's, it's weird how it goes. It's almost like you're randomly selected out of like this, group of people that like i'm pretty sure you apply in the same pro i've actually never done a lottery marathon mm. so it's hard to really speak of what the process is but from my understanding it's you know you put in your your time or your qualifications as normal and then you know you may or may not get picked depending on i guess when you apply mm. or when you know mm-hmm. whatever credentials mm-hmm. it may be mm-hmm. and i want to get to those bigger marathons eventually but as crazy as it sounds like i love just the you know, no name, like weird, just like middle of nowhere marathon. So those mm-hmm. are my favorite. Kind of cult, um, like following. Yeah. Sort of. No, definitely. Like, um, I know one of the, 
um, people on my status, like ask the question, like what's been your favorite one mm-hmm. and everything. And it's, 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 it's so hard because like they all offer something special in a unique way. And like you would, it like, it's weird because like Boston is a really fun one. Don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, the energy there is unreal. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, I've never seen so many people get so into running. They're like treated like celebrities. Like they, like Sam Adams brews a certain type of beer only during the Boston marathon. Uh, Isn't it like called the 26.2? Yeah, 26.2. It's a, it's a believe a ghost style ale it's super good is it it's 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 really light and refreshing uh-huh. um it's honestly one of my favorite sam adams and it's only available like one week out of the year oh, for wow. those of you that don't know 26.2 miles is the distance of a marathon so <laughs> that is true we don't not the everybody more, uh, knows this all, all <laughs> the more this, you know yeah, no i know more, i have to like wait, let's rephrase that question though mm-hmm. not what's your favorite maybe it'd be easy to answer if we said if you had to recommend one okay if, if, if i said i want to run a marathon i want to run one marathon my, my mm-hmm. life and i'm good Okay. Out of the ones you ran, what would you recommend? I really loved, um, so I did, I think it's actually called the Petrified Forest Marathon. It's Damn. in Arizona. Super scenic. That's dope. And it's it's all in the national park, the Petrified oh, wow. Forest. It's insane. I mean, such a cool euphoric experience because like, it's a small race. I think they only had 100, 150 people do it. Mm-hmm. And um, like... It was so deathly quiet in there. I could hear the pulsing in my head while oh, I was wow. running. It was that quiet. So did these things just... thin out then, these marathons? Because um, I, I don't have any... We, <laughs> you're talking to some layman here. Like, we don't... Are they, <laughs> they, they really thin out? They... Yeah, they they definitely thin out. It I'm depends sure on the race like and everything. Like people too. It yeah, it depends cool. on the race. Like like Boston is never a dull moment. I mean, I am. <laughs> I mean, there's thirty two thousand people that do it. So like it thins out and it gets you know, to where you can move around a little more, Mm -hmm. but there's always people cheering, always someone right there. Like there's always the whole time. Like there's never, yeah, there's never a stretch to where I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. It's people everywhere. It's almost like overwhelming sometimes because it's just (laughs) like, I mean, it's like, it's like deafening how like, you know, the cheers and just like everything going on around you. It's insane. And there's, there's like never a dull moment during it. Like, I mean, like I said, people get so into it. There's like a dude like on his drum set on on the porch, like playing his beat. No. Like there's like a guy like serenading on the side, and then like there, like yeah, it's, it's it falls on Patriots Day, and and naturally like New Englanders are very like proud people. They're mm-hmm. very patriotic mm-hmm. and stuff. So like they take it seriously, and maybe it's an excuse to just day drink, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but hey, but um, but no, they they have a blast. I have a blast. Like it's all. That's it's cool. It's cool. So yeah, like it's so to answer your question, yeah, I I absolutely love the Petrified Forest Marathon because it was super scenic. The people were awesome. Like it was it's very like um personable. I mean, just because it's such a small race, mm-hmm. like everyone's just friends there and like I mean, it, and and since it's so scenic, you get people that that aren't going to win. They're mm-hmm. going for like the fact of doing a marathon, like I actually met someone out there who like, it was super inspiring. He, uh, he was telling me his story. He was actually from New York and he lost a ton of weight over the course of like a few years. Mm-hmm. I want to say he, he lost more than like I weighed. I want to say he lost like 150, like a hundred, oh, like, like a, t- a substantial amount of weight. And it was so inspiring. Cause yeah, it was like a promise he made to either like his brother, or, like his brother-in-law, or, like a family member. Um, and he stuck to it Hmm, and like, um, and he, you know, worked his way up from just doing a 5k to like, that was his first marathon. And that was so cool to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like I, I even like told him or at least I think I told him, hopefully I told him, (laughs) but (laughs) no, listening, (laughs) if you're listening out there, how funny would that be? No, but, (laughs) but, um, yeah, like I honestly, I thought that was more inspiring than anything I've done running because that takes so much willpower Mm. to do that i mean that's you know that's somebody who just you know grit their teeth and just like completely change their entire life and Mm -hmm. their lifestyle Mm -hmm. to work all the way up to do a marathon like so many people haven't even you know done a marathon and this guy like if if anybody you know he's basically living proof that anyone can do it right well there's a difference between losing weight getting in shape and getting in marathon shape. Exactly. First of all, you know how many people want to lose weight and can't because it's, you know, for whatever right. reasons. And then who, okay, so you lose some weight, but now you want to be fit. You want to right. be in shape. Great. 
And then yeah. getting in Maryland, I mean, the, the, what a tremendous it's, feat. I mean, that's, oh, it's, it was so inspiring. I mean, he, you know, he brought his son there. His son did it too. And like, mm. it was just so cool to see. Like, that's, cool. that's honestly just what I love about it. Like, just getting to meet the people and just, like, you know, soaking in the environment. Mm-hmm. Like, um, <laughs> it's so crazy because, like, uh, I was just talking to some individuals and then, uh, you know, that, that race, I, I feel like, you know, naturally would bring people from – Mm-hmm. around the world or around mm-hmm. the country at least mm-hmm. but a bulk of them were just you know from arizona and stuff they found mm-hmm. out from michigan they're like you came all the way here For to do race. this race i yeah. was like dude it's in a national park of course i want to do it like it's that like, is it's, cool though that's a, i've never heard of that that's the petrified forest yeah oh, yeah. oh no the, that it. race oh i didn't know yeah. that was a thing I it's thought... a really they've only been doing i think not even that long only like five or six years i think maybe seven years like it's it's not a very long running race um see i thought the petrified forest was something like harry potter (laughs) (laughs) you know what it it very well could be both is it possible that it's real and in harry fact check for the harry potter fans out there like so how does something get petrified so okay is it like frozen in time kind of it's kind of yeah it's so over millions of years this used to be a forest okay and um over millions of years of the volcanic activity, like the trees were knocked over, they were buried underneath sediment, and then they went through a petrification process, which basically made it like colorful rainbow hardened wood. It's weird. Really? It's and it's f- like full of these logs that are just like rainbow colored. It's kind of trippy. It's bizarre. Wow. It's, it's so there's so no like upstanding scenic. trees. It's everything's no. like falling yeah. down. Yeah. So it's yeah, the, yeah. So it almost like is a misconception with the name. It's definitely not a forest. <laughs> it used to be. I never knew millions this was of a years thing. ago. But yeah, it's it's straight up like a desert now, really, and just has these like barren, you know, like really you know, stumps That's and, badass. and wood. It's really cool. It's mm. it's and it's funny because uh, I talk to people about it, and even though the marathon was in the fall, um, you know, because people were wondering, oh, Arizona, it's got to be really hot and mm-hmm. everything. Actually, it wasn't the heat that because it was only I think. Because we ran super early in the morning and it was in the fall. I want to say it was only like like 40 degrees. Like it was what? not, mm. it, wow. you know, it was definitely cool. It was the elevation. Yeah. Mm. Like it was at like 7,000 feet, which is, va- you know, it's virtually zero in Lansing. So like the elevation change, I mean, you felt it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it was something I didn't really train for. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> like I'll get used to it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> about 10 miles. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it yeah. out. Dude, we were just in Colorado less than a month ago. About a month ago. Yeah, it was probably a month ago. Mm-hmm. And I went for a run there and I was like, whoa. And you, you feel it. Dude, <laughs> well, then we were there <laughs> really last September do. too and I did the same thing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go out so for an easy four. And I'm like, like oh and the, I, the irony of the full thing was the my buddy's house is where we were staying. Mm-hmm. And um, I ran down this hill and then around this beautiful lake, just right in the middle of the Rockies, man. But if you notice how I said, I ran down this hill. So by the end, of, I was at about three and a half. And I'm looking, and this hill is just massive. And the elevation had gotten to me by now. And I'm just like, all right, half, you know, just like, ah, but yeah, dude, that elevation, it's an assassin. It, it does. I know. Like, I went for a run. Uh, so I, my brother and I went on a big Western road trip. Me and my puny uh, four mile run. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, I think, all we did, though, when we were out, because we were staying in uh, Evergreen, which is right, I want to say it's, um, where is it? I want to say like an hour, hour and a half from Denver or so. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so like it's, um, yeah, it's, it's you know, yeah, elevation it's is crazy It's a very there. real thing. It, yeah, it, it really is because we woke up and like, oh yeah, let's go for a run and everything. And like my cousin lives pretty much like in the mountains area and like, you know, she goes for a run with us and... I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really feeling this, but I don't want to like tell anybody. Yeah, <laughs> like I was she's, like, I was she's like, just jogging, and having a conversation. She, she's used to it and everything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she like stopped. Like, oh, this is really gorgeous. Let's take pictures. I'm like, yes, let's, let's, let's take, take pictures. pictures. <laughs> you know, like, let's like stop. Not, not tired at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's take pictures. <laughs> so, we talked a lot about this running thing, which I think is uh, is super impressive. But something mm-hmm. else I really want to touch on. Yeah. Um, a lot of because I I'm very open to having conversations with people about just what they want to do for a living and um, mm-hmm. like friends of mine and um, and in a lot of people 
say, oh, I want to travel and do all these things, but how do you make a living doing that? And I, mm-hmm. one of the biggest things I suggest is, well, if you think you can write or are creative, maybe start a blog. If you right. think you're good, you can be good in front of a camera and it's easier to talk to a camera, start a vlog. And if you can build a following and a presence mm-hmm. and bring value to people and get, build an audience, yeah. then you can eventually monetize that or leverage that against potential um, sponsors. You know, th- there's no shortage, but... Um, and people think I'm cr- when I tell them that mm-hmm. th- there are no shortage of people who are killing it in this atmosphere. Oh yeah, um, they don't really think that that's a real thing. And mm-hmm. and here um, you are. I mean, you you have your blog and your while you're doing that, you're pursuing this endeavor with the marathoning. And mm-hmm. like you said, I know you have your job too, and you're, right. and you're balancing all these things. But you're you've found a way to do your passion and project which is trying to run in all 50 states Mm -hmm. um while you're pursuing this blog i'm sure for personal reasons yeah you know i'm sure it's a sense of fulfillment as well as you know Mm -hmm. creating a legacy of whatever that is that you want to leave behind yeah um i don't know if you want to talk about advice you have for maybe positive impacts or opportunities that the blog has done for you or things of that nature because yeah um i think your writing style is very good i think you're a you were a marketing major, right? And a yep. te- technical writing minor or something yep, like that? professional technical writing minor. Okay. Which you is did your very homework. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I do my best. <laughs> well, you made it easy. You had it all laid out on your blog. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's <laughs> Okay, yeah. You, you looked at the about me yeah. section. All right. I, I, I read every article I could find. Um, awesome. Sounds but, uh, good. I would have stopped early if you were if it wasn't interesting. So it was interesting. <laughs> well, uh, I, I appreciate it. That means I a wish lot. I had more yeah. pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I got like a, a, a pop up book section. Like a three. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's an interesting combination in itself. But yeah. um, and obviously, so you and I, I don't think we said this. You went to Saginaw Valley, which is where we went. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if you want to talk about that because that's usually the first advice I give to people. And I'm not saying start a blog and become a millionaire. Right. That's not the answer. I'm saying. If you can find a way to talk about what, but I mean, I'm a vlog. I, I prefer, you know, talking to the camera. That's my style. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If you can find a way to, if you're doing stuff you're passionate about anyway, and you can write about it or talk about it and make stuff around it, um, there's potential for massive gain or opportunity without taking an insane amount of risk. And I just yeah. was wondering if you talk about that and give some advice to people who, who might be. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> Now, I, I'm not actually, don't credit me for this quote. I didn't actually come up with it, but what kind of came to mind is um, what someone told me one time, the two most important days of your life are the day that you're born and the day you find out why. Mm. And I'm a huge believer in that. I mean, like it's, and like you said, it's not a one size fits all thing. I don't expect everybody to go out there and make the same goal as me to run a marathon right. in all 50 states or start a blog. I mean, if you want to, that's cool. Like I'm not knocking you, but, <laughs> um, it's all about just figuring out, you know, what makes you happy. And, um, to me, the best way I figure that out is just, you know, is acquiring knowledge, doing new things. Like, you know, like if someone approached me today and said like, you know, do you want to try salsa dancing? I'm like, sure. Why not? Yeah. Like I've never tried salsa dancing before. You know, what's it all about? I could find out that I I like dancing. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But I could discover like, man, I really like this. I could, you know, I'd be like, I'm really passionate about this. I want to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And it's just all about just, it's all about just growing and learning new things. Like in my personal belief, you can't stay stagnant. You can't get in a routine of, I'm just going to, you know, duck my head down, work eight to five or nine to five or whatever, go home and watch Netflix, go to bed, do the same thing again, you know, pay my bills and then just that be my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, that <laughs> it gives me so much anxiety. Like I, I don't want my life to become that. Yeah. Like, um, and, and yeah, obviously I stay busy with it. Like, um, you know, like I do work the typical eight to five, and everything, typical office job and everything. But, you know, obviously I do stuff on the side that I'm passionate about and I love doing. And who knows? I mean, like, it, one of them could take off one day and that could be my calling or that could be my living and that could be my full-time job. Um, so I think the biggest thing is just figuring yourself out. And the best way I've done that is through traveling and, and um, talking with different people, going to different cultures and like understanding their way of life mm. and um, what they're passionate about. Mm-hmm. I think that's just the biggest thing and i mean when and when you meet someone with that passion it's just so like infectious Mm -hmm. like it's like man like you know like it's so cool how like passionate this person is about salsa dancing or glass blowing or Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. whatever you know their their quirk may be it's just it's just cool to see that spark in everybody mm-hmm. and i guess i guess the first step is figuring out what your spark is yeah and what makes you tick what you're what you're happy doing and um you know my personal belief is that if it truly is your spark and it's something that just makes you happy and, and gives fulfillment to your life, you're going to figure out a way to, to make it work and mesh it into your life. Um, yeah. So there's your, uh, <laughs> po- no, positive no, uh, tidbit good. there. <laughs> so you, um, and, and that's kind of the advice I preach. I'm like, you don't have to mm-hmm. drop and quit your job and do what you're doing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, if it's something that you're already spending your free time after work or before work doing anyway, then mm-hmm. it's not, Right. Out of the reach to to try and find a way to expand that personal legend or brand in in, yeah. in any aspect you can. Um, have you? Because I noticed it's like in your blog, you talk about mm-hmm. um, like your own like keeping your own mental health in check, which yeah. I think isn't talked about you know nearly enough. Yeah. Or provided enough solutions to people. Does is blogging and writing and being creative in that aspect a form of? Um, does that provide any like peace of mind or solace for you putting, you know, like putting your thoughts on the internet Mm -hmm. and and, and taking that effort? Does that help? Is that advice you might give to somebody if they're struggling with, with some of this stuff? Like, Oh yeah. Thoughts out there like that. Most definitely. Um, so yeah, like, um, as you notice too, like, um, you know, the blog is uh, juxtaposed journeys. If you ever want to check it out, we will plug, um, we'll plug that too yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean that, I think you, you know, um, hit the nail on the head there with like, it's, it's really about all the different journeys we take, whether that be physical, mental, everything like that. I've only been opening up about my mental health recently. Um, I have clinical OCD. I've been kind of silently dealing with it my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, some days it's easier to deal with than others. And, um, you know, typically I, I stay busy and everything. And I actually started getting, I started going to counseling for it beginning of the year, which I think was super helpful. And I continue to go biweekly just to kind of keep myself in check. Sure. And, um, and that was actually one of the things that my counselor recommended is just like getting back into writing and blogging and doing these creative outlets. Cause he said, typically, um, creative people, uh, writing is one of the best medicines for, I guess, getting anxious and dealing with your mental health because it's, it's a, it's a, a way of combining, you know, task and creativity. Mm. Cause what you're doing is, you know, like you're, you're putting something out there, you're, you're getting stuff done, you're completing a task, right. which is keeping you busy, keeping your mind occupied, but then you're, it's also forcing you to be creative and to, you know, think outside the box mm-hmm. to, right. uh, do what makes you happy. So yeah, I mean, it gives me a ton of fulfillment, honestly, to just open up about it. And I've gotten, you know, tons of, of, um, a personal message and everything from people. And it's, it's been really inspiring who are just like, you know, um, it's really cool that you put yourself out there like this because I deal with this as well. Like I've been going to counseling or, you know, it's something I silently deal with too. And like, I guess my main goal is to show how connected we all are Mm. at our core. Not really, you know, like the last thing I ever want to do is, um, you know, I guess, put our differences on display or say, you know, like if I, if I put anything out there, that's like all the traveling and stuff doing, you know, I'm putting it out there in a way that's like, Hey, you guys can do this too. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I'm definitely not rich. I don't have as much free time as you think I'd have, you know, all this stuff. Like I, I just manage it all really well and I make it work. Like, you know, I do my vacation super cheap. Like I'll I'll crash on friends' couches and Mm -hmm. I'll (laughs) do that. Like I, um, yeah. So like, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been very helpful for me, um, to just put it out there for the world to see, to kind of just like reflect on how much I've grown and everything too. Um, I was even thinking about that on the, on the drive up here, down here, whatever here, direction I came <laughs> from, whatever direction I came from. I always from. say up here. It just makes more <laughs> I know, sense. It just doesn't matter where you're better. from, it matters where you're going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know whenever, whenever I, I feel like I say up here and I'm actually going south, they're like, you mean down here? I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry. I I, I'm sorry. Hey, and when you're ready for another uh, Oberon, that last one's got your name on it. So let me know. I got the bottle oh, open. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to dig into some good stories here. So right. yeah, I need some, need some fuel for that. All right. But, <laughs> some creative juice. <laughs> exactly. But uh, no, it's been, it's been super helpful. And like, I've been trying to anchor down on an actual like theme for it because I, you know, like, 
I want it to be about my physical travels too. I don't want it to just be about my mental health as well, but I want it to be, but at the same time, I want it to be authentic mm-hmm. as well. But, like, so there's three categories about, for everybody listening and they right. should check out your stuff. Um, mm-hmm. There are three categories. Mm-hmm. Will you explain? The yeah. Three so styles? there are the, the physical journeys, um, the mental journeys, and then which can get kind of dicey because the two, you can already go hand in hand. There's some overlap. Which th- sure. there is some, definitely some, some overlap there for sure. And that, and also with the collections, there's a lot of overlap there too, which I guess kind of like encompasses the whole theme of it too. Like there's not everything in life is black and white. Right. Mm. I mean, it's, they're all interconnected in their own way, even though they are the separate categories. Um, the collections, uh, I've turned into all my different marathons. It's funny cause I have a couple different things that I collect and everything too. Like I started collecting this you are here Starbucks mugs. And I was going to do some stories on those too. Cause the backstory on those are pretty interesting in itself as well. But, um, but yeah, I mean like, uh, so those are the three, um, categories and, and like I said, they're all intertwined with each other. Mm-hmm. And um, just so the, the marathons are, uh, that, that's called physical. What, what are they? I kind of label them as both. I think I put them actually technically in both categories, like the physical travels and the collections. I think they, there's that overlap there. So it gets, it gets a little dicey sometimes. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I just want to help people understand oh, for sure. kind of your brand and what they're getting when they go to your website. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, and I think the thing I appreciated about, especially the mental health stuff was how mm-hmm. transparent you are. Cause mm-hmm. I think, um, a lot of people would really struggle with putting themselves out there like that, especially on a yeah. public, uh, medium, like your own blog. Yeah. Um, you're very honest with yourself. You seem very self-aware mm-hmm. and I'm curious, does that in turn put you at peace? By, by kind of just throwing it all out there and yeah. like now it's public knowledge. Everybody can know the stuff you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, does that in turn give you peace of mind? Because it's like not like you're worried about hiding it maybe. Yeah. Because yeah, I, no, I, 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 I thought um, that that's, ad, that's admirable because, you know, social media in, in the internet makes for a very interesting di- uh, like profile dynamic and how you view people and oh, you definitely. put out what you want to be perceived. Like people right. think our day is what my seven minute vlog is and his six second video. Like there's right. obviously more that goes on in the day. Yeah, than, exactly. And so I, I'm just curious, um, but by doing that, did that give you peace of mind? And it, did that give you some, some self esteem and comfort and, you know, being at peace with the situation? I would say it did. Yeah. Um, cause I definitely didn't want to live a lie or anything yeah. like, um, I'll openly admit, you know, like I, I, I definitely have some mental health issues going on, but like I'm doing everything I can to like manage it and try to improve and get better every day. And I think more so what I'm looking for, I'm not looking for sympathy or anything. I'm looking for just understanding from mm. people. Mm. Like if I come off as, you know, not being very social or I'm not talking that much or just something going on, I want them to understand a little bit. Right. Like it's it's nothing personal or anything. It's just, you know, sometimes I go through spells of being extremely anxious and stuff. Yeah. And if I can't sure. if I can't go out and go for a run and everything yeah. and, and have to, you know, <laughs> deal with that in that way. I mean it's just um it's just so people can kind of be aware as well and not feel so alone. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like <clears throat> the aspect that you've taken with your uh your blog and just like focus on the journeys part of it and mm-hmm. how it's in your name. And I love mm-hmm. that because I mean, it's what I truly believe in. Like we have this grand goal of what we want screw to be one day, but mm-hmm. yeah. the whole journey of it is three quarters of the fun. The majority oh, yeah. of oh, the definitely. fun, yes. you know, oh, it's, really? that yes. is the journey is what you're ultimately pursuing. Yeah. You know, oh, definitely. like we want to have, you know, this big brand and everything, but mm-hmm. if we're not enjoying what we're doing yeah. and all the little things along the way, then what's the point? What's the yeah, point? Exactly. What's it worth? And I think that's super cool that you embrace that. And, uh, you know, you've, you've built your kind of your blog around that and your lifestyle about going mm-hmm. out and having this journey of doing a marathon in every state, but also mm-hmm. experiencing the state and the yeah. city and what it has to offer and yeah. leaving your day open just to have beers with like the, the muffin t-shirt guy and everything, <laughs> exactly. you know, I think that is a very fun and simple way to live that provides a lot of, um, just value to yourself, you oh, know, definitely. and happiness. Oh yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's so funny cause talking about perception and everything too, like, uh, like, you know, cause sometimes people like come up to me and think that I'm some like, you know, traveling expert or mm. I know all the hot spots yeah. or know like 
all these different things and and but like honestly like a lot of those trips like with joel and i like we just wing it like, <laughs> yeah we'll have <laughs> these different the destinations and they're just like oh i forgot this is here okay let's stop here this is a cool picture and just like do stuff like that like it's really not as planned or as complicated as you'd think mm. like it's literally just we packed up our car full of stuff and we drove yeah. <laughs> like, those are the funnest ones like, man no and that's 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 how it should be i mean that's that's uh that's really the i mean the most fun i've had and um i have a philosophy too like it's i feel like the the um the true like secret to happiness in my opinion is removing expectations because you know i feel like a lot of people they get this checklist in their head of just like, I need to have this, this, this done. You mm -hmm. know, if they don't, if there's certain areas of their life that's lacking, you know, they get frustrated or, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and I'll admit I'm not perfect. I can get guilty of that too. But overall, I think it's just, it's more so just enjoying the ride, you mm -hmm. know, just, um, not really having those hard expectations, but just focusing on that journey, focusing on where you're at right now or where you're headed. Um, and yeah, like I was, thinking back to it while I was, while I was driving here today, like just thinking about how far I've come, even in the last couple months with like yeah. my mental health and everything mm. like that. I was just like, you know, things I used to dwell on or anything like that. Like, you know, I haven't thought about in weeks or months. And it just like, it just like, like thought of it as like, those things used to bog me down every day and I don't think about them anymore. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's incredible. like, um, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's um, that no expectations thing too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's something that him and I talk about a lot, mm -hmm. and it, st it stemmed mainly from from Kenny. I don't know, uh, you know, how we really got um, talking about it, but it's something that he had, you know, started, you know, telling me have less and less expectations. Right. And I think um, for me, where that's most applicable, and for him as well, in in a good exercise for a lot of people, it's like let's say you're going away for a weekend, or like you know, it's. You know, Memorial weekend, you got this going on and, and people like tend to really like build up like all like what this experience can be. Or you're going out to the bar or Saturday night with your friends. People mm -hmm. like to just let their, their, their yeah. mind just start running, but everything that could happen. Right. And what happens is a lot. Next thing you know, the night's over and you, you're, maybe you're disappointed or like, or you let the, the angst of what's next, what's next, what's next, instead of enjoying this delicious ice cold beer that's in right. your hand or whatever it is, or you know what I mean? You're, you're drinking it to, to, to order the next one. And like, yeah. Um, and I think something that we've really done and, and implemented the last six months is really having these no expectations and just being present in the moment when you oh, for sure. and, mm -hmm. and enjoying the experience mm -hmm. and it's yielded incredibly, incredibly enjoyable results with life. Never those nights where you're like, well, that, that wasn't fun. But if you have no expectations and anything remotely interesting happens, like, yeah. wow, that was incredible. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah. And it's, I think that, that that's just super important for, you know, step by step, like just, mm -hmm. just take things for what they are and, and, and don't, yeah, blow them into something bigger than they have to be. Oh, definitely. I, I agree My brother really articulated that well, and then kind of brought that into my own perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, where did you? I don't. Um, I think I might have read something in Tim Ferriss that talked about that. I don't really remember. Maybe Trevor Mentors. Hmm. Maybe something of yeah of that nature. I'm pretty hmm. sure he said something like that or some podcast. But then I just kind of. I did, since we moved down here, I've done a lot of reflecting on my own and just yeah. kind of sat in like one of these chairs with just time on my hands said, I'm just going to sit here and think and just get into my own mind yeah. and really have like dug into, all right, why do I feel this way about this? Or why did I get upset about this? Or why wasn't mm -hmm. this fun or whatever? Oh yeah. And it kind of really came down to is like, you put expectations on the day of how much you think you can get done mm -hmm. or what's, how much fun the party bus is going to be this weekend yeah. or whatever it may be, or this trip up North. And it's like, you're only doing yourself harm by yeah. doing that like all right i know that today's gonna be a good day but just leave it at that yeah. and, you know and just be open for whatever happens i know the party bus this weekend's gonna be a blast <laughs> but i'm not gonna be like oh i'm gonna get like 10 chicks phone numbers yeah, or i'm gonna right. get super <laughs> wasted or or whatever it's gonna be i'm gonna dance i'm gonna dance my face off and be the best dancer there or whatever it be, may be just be like all right i'm just gonna go into this be like dude i'm just gonna be myself yeah and i'm just gonna have the best time as possible and whatever happens happens yeah you know and i think what that mixed with what you said earlier mm -hmm. about um, being open to opportunity, like the salsa example. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, it is so, like, that's life. Like, being just open to trying new things and Definitely. new people and um, just seeing what people have to offer is truly yeah. incredible. You know, you just never know 
who's going to introduce you to, to, to what that, you know, could be something that you really enjoy or, you know, you just, you just yeah. really never know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the expectation things I think is super important. Um, Definitely. And why we're kind of on this, this topic yeah. of your blog and everything before, mm-hmm. cause I know we want to do questions. Right. Um, Cause we got you, you, you did a good job on recruiting some questions. You did you came through on that part. <laughs> I man. know. I was surprised it got like as big of a response. Yeah. yeah dude, so, like, wow, well, okay. Now hopefully they, they listen to the podcast, hear the questions. I but, guess. Uh, yeah. One thing I had to ask you about, I wrote it down cause I really didn't want to forget. The, <laughs> now you had your, you, I, you said on your blog, you had palm reading done, but the one thing mm-hmm. I didn't know, really know what it was and I didn't bother looking into it cause I wanted to hear it from you. Yeah. The past life regression. What is yeah. that? So, okay. Um, this one, I, how did it go? Like, she was like in the Grand Rapids area, um, but it was it was labeled as a past life regression. I've done I've read tons of books on it. Um, essentially, what you do is you're in a they they hypnotize you and you're in like a you're you can ab- you're able to tap into like your super conscious okay. like mm. your like the deep parts of your brain. Mm. And usually, when people are in those states, they talk about like different past lives they've lived and, oh, and like wow. it's it's weird like they'll talk about these different facts that they don't know in their waking state that makes you wonder it's like okay maybe this person really was a conductor or something in their past <laughs> right, life right. they they just spouted about trains for two hours right. and they don't know anything about trains and like it's it's weird stuff but like um so um yeah, and uh, I guess I was guilty of the expectations thing too, because part of me was thinking like, "Man, it's gonna be so cool! I'm gonna be hypnotized. I'm yeah, gonna talk yeah. about all these different past I lives." Like, and stuff. I was a king. I was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. a king. Yeah. So you were a peasant in Rome. <laughs> yeah, um, but like I thought I would, I would do all this and everything, and like, but it was weird because, and it was something I never really thought about. But um, apparently, when you when you're in a hypnotic state. Like, it's not like you'd expect to where all of a sudden you're hypnotized and you're just like, like, you're just in a hypnotic state until they snap their fingers or something. And you're just like consistently there. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, like a wave, like it comes and goes, Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. And I never really knew. Um, and, um, so she attempted to hypnotize me. Um, but as weird as it is, I feel like it, I don't know. It's hard to describe because like. I feel like I started to dip down to that, but then I would come back. Really? So it was hard to really distinguish if I was actually there or not. Sure. Mm-hmm. But um but she was mainly she wasn't going into like past lives or anything. I think if I wanted to do a few more sessions, she probably would have eventually got to stuff like right. that. But she was kind of testing the waters and she was trying to essentially like get to the root cause of um of my anxiousness and like the reason why I may have panic attacks or something Mm -hmm. and, um, or, or kind of like recognize when it's coming and then be able to shut it off or go to like that happy place and like calm down. So that's essentially what she was doing. Um, it sounded cool saying a past life regression. She technically was, but I didn't, I didn't have any past life things done. Um, but um, I guess it depends on your take and everything. I know I have a lot of weird world True. views and stuff, but one of them is I do believe in, in past lives mm-hmm. and, um, like, yeah. And I had a palm reading done and like you were saying, like I've basically been around for a while. Like I've lived quite a few past lives <laughs> and I'm curious to like explore them. Mm, yeah. Like, I think it'd be cool to do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully once I get, um, better at being hypnotized <laughs> yeah do you think you you can become hypnotized i think so yeah i think if um i probably just had i don't know i probably just thought the expectations run wild mm. and i you know like um I, I don't think my mind was as relaxed as it sure. should have been mm-hmm. i guess for what mm-hmm. i was getting and stuff like that so like i feel like i can definitely get mm-hmm. there eventually mm-hmm. um but yeah, like anything, it would just take practice and stuff. Just got to be patient with it. So what makes you believe in past lives? How did you get introduced to that? And what Yeah. What provides... Um, you got it? The camera. <laughs> you know, what provides uh, your interest in that? Um, yeah, so like... Uh, it's funny because a friend of the family actually introduced me to a book. She said, you got to read it with an open mind by Brian Weiss. It's called Many Lives, Many Masters. 
And uh, I forgot how I even got on the subject, but she was just like, it's a super interesting book because this, you know, young woman, she has like so many inexplainable fears Hmm. and all this stuff. And she's like trying to get to the root cause of it. She's tried like, you know, like um, I think she's tried different therapy and different medication, stuff like that. But like her her anxiety and her phobias were so bad, like she wouldn't take medication anymore because she had a fear of choking. Mm -hmm. And she so she wouldn't take anything. And she like. And was just basically afraid of the world and afraid of everything. But she had no rational explanation to why she was. She just was. So she eventually went to um, a psychologist who put her under hypnosis. And he wanted to figure out if there was like a repressed memory from her childhood Mm -hmm. that would explain it. And he was basically like, okay, go back to the very beginning. And she starts like talking about these like cathedral steps and everything. And he's like, what is going on? (laughs) And she starts like explaining uh, like this life of another person in depth of like, you know, she had a kid. She didn't have any kids in this life or anything. And and she like, and she, there was a flood and she drowned. Mm. And then after that, after she had that realization, that experience, she woke up like she wasn't afraid of water anymore. Mm. Like all of her irrational fears or seemingly irrational fears were a way she died in a past life. Hmm. Uh, and this guy was a total, and it's a true story and everything. Like this guy was a total skeptic, didn't even th- think it was possible to live past lives or anything like that. And mm-hmm. he was, became a firm believer because it was just, there's so many, I mean, there's so much more to the story, but like. Um, well, I mean, obviously you're not an expert, but I, this is something yeah. I know nothing about. It's, I, it's really interesting stuff. About. I mean, it, and it makes, not I don't know, life. it makes sense. Like, cause, cause I mean, I feel like there are just different interactions, different people or different talents that you have that like, or that other people have that like, they're just naturally good at sure. or naturally know a little bit more about, or like you meet someone and you feel like you've known them forever. Mm-hmm chances are you may have in right. a different life or things mm-hmm. like that. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously getting very abstract here, but well, like, no, that's fine. I mean, this is, but no, this yeah, is that's very um, judgment free, but what, sure. so why do you think that affects some people more than others? Like this lady who obviously had the extreme end of it. Right. And, and, and I noticed that you had said, cause I'm complete unfamiliar with any of this. Yeah. I noticed you said, Oh, I think I've lived a lot of past. Well, are, by, by this concept are some people been around longer than other people. Because mm-hmm. I guess the way on the surface I would understand is everybody's probably lived about the same. If the idea is, is this the same as reincarnation or is this completely different? Essentially, yeah. I, um, yeah, like it's uh, it's almost a little different from that. I mean, but it's related in a lot of ways because um, I've read a couple of his books and, and it's weird because like some there have been some instances when people talk about their past lives and everything to where they would be something that's not human which hmm. would give the idea of reincarnation, reincarnation. <laughs> gotcha. well, i just want to um, interject is reincarnation is the difference between like reincarnation and past lives reincarnation are you like punished for something that you did in sort of yeah the life before um, so you come back as like something less is that kind of yeah, like the concept um, of reincarnation and, and yeah that's that's essentially the idea of it um I can't speak like fully to its theory, but that's essentially what Mm, it is. Um, And like, and that same idea applies to like these past lives and stuff too. Like Mm. if you are, you know, really judgmental towards like certain people or something like that, you're in your next life, more than likely you're going to be that person Mm, mm, to mm. teach you the lesson, Mm -hmm. you know, to make you more Mm well-rounded. And, um, and then it's, it's interesting because the way they describe it, like, it's 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 weird it's like when you know when they're in that like in between state between lives it's basically just like these highly evolved souls that are like their mentors almost and they like review their life and they're just like okay like you know you learned this you did really good at this but you didn't quite get this so you need to go back and you need to learn this again Mm -hmm. so it's almost and and it's never really like the best way to describe it is like you know, there's no, there's no punishing or anything like that. Like, it's just like a, Lesson. I don't know. It's just almost like you just need to retake something. Like, yeah. it's like, okay, you didn't quite get this. Let, try it again. Mm. But it's not like a, it's not like you're going to, you know, like go to hell or, or burn somewhere. Or Wind up like an that. ant next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, sure, sure. Yeah. Now, does that, does past lives explain like dreams? It, does it like talk about like dreams are from other lives? Does it touch on that? Um, when I had my palm reading done, uh, the person's wife, uh, I don't remember where she read this from or anything, but she was basically saying from some of the literature and things she's read is that in dreams, you're essentially having an out-of-body experience and you're, and you're traveling to different realms and everything. Mm. And, um, 
she said when when like you uh when like you have a dream where you're like falling over and you like jump and you wake up <laughs> she described it as your soul coming back into your body and it just comes in a little too hard <laughs> really <laughs> it's like i was like you never know yeah who, know, who knows right <laughs> yeah i was like that would make sense that's very interesting yeah no, it's super interesting and it's one of those things like you know like um obviously everyone's gonna believe what they want and everything mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. that's honestly something that makes sense to me it gives me hope and everything like um i guess my quick rant on like religion and stuff real mm-hmm. quick but like um because obviously everyone has their different beliefs and everything like that and mine get very complicated to describe (laughs) most of the time but um i mean at the end of the day my idea is like hey like you can believe in like spitting lizards if you want like if it makes you like go out and be and want to be a better person and contribute to the world hey go for it Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what i mean who's to say what's right and wrong right i know right nobody here nobody here has died yet yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, no, uh, I, I, I think people, and me included, and everyone included, and one thing that every, it's just keep always keeping on, um, working on keeping an open mind and yeah. just always challenging yourself. Like I don't know anything about this, but like that's why I ask. I'm curious to learn. Yeah. And, oh, definitely. And that's and that's part of the journey and collecting as much information from mm-hmm. people who can teach you different things and just formulating your own opinion on it. Like that's just, oh, definitely. that's life. So, yeah. Um, and I mean like, you know, I was raised Christian Presbyterian. Um, and then, uh, like I've read books on Taoism, I've read books on Buddhism. Like I'm, I'm just interested in all those yeah. different ideas. Like I like being well-rounded Yep. and, um, and just learning about different things, seeing what other people have to say about yeah. it. And like, um, and yeah, like, and at the end of the day, it's just about, Living the life you want to live, you yeah. know what I mean? Now, I'll take a segue over here. So, I still have the business in the Buddha that you gave me. I don't oh, I don't have yeah. it here. I wish I did because well, I was going to give it back to you. From that. Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah you gave yeah. me that a long time, a couple years ago. <laughs> it's at home, so I have to get yeah, that from yeah. Clio. But um, what are some of your favorite books that okay. you'd, you'd recommend or you'd give to people? Yeah. Because um, you read a decent amount. Don't yeah, you? I yeah. do. Um, so, you can give like three because I know it's hard to pick one. So, if you had to give like three books to – recommend to somebody hey you know what you want to expand your mind a little bit or mm-hmm. you know challenge yourself but what are a few you might recommend all right three off the top of my head um many lives many masters by brian weiss i'd have to recommend because me personally it changed my outlook on life mm-hmm. like it made me like you know less afraid of like dying in the afterlife and everything because it's it's i don't know the philosophy of it it's so interesting because it mixes like hard you know, science and facts yeah. and just things this guy experienced mm-hmm. and how he was a total skeptic beforehand on past lives and didn't even think twice about the possibility yeah. of it. But he was so moved by the experience. It's like, I don't know how to debunk this. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's an incredibly interesting read. Mm-hmm. If you read it with an open mind, um, you know, um, very, very good writing style, like, you know, captivating storyteller for sure. It's very easy read. Sure. Um, that one, uh, Tuesdays with Maury. Um, my pastor actually gave me that as a, as a gift in my open house. Mm. Um, and I literally read it in one sitting. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's a great, I mean, it's just, uh, I mentioned album. It's, it's a fantastic book because it's, it's just all about, it's, it's really a beautiful story because it's, you know, about, um, a young guy and his, and his professor who was like highly regarded in his head. And they just meet up on Tuesdays and they just like talk and converse about life and just like the different things that they talk about, you know, that's, um, the conflicting, I guess, what's important in life and not really Mm -hmm. conflicting, but complimentary in a Mm -hmm. lot of way, Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. But, um, it's, it's really like, it's so cool. I mean, it just, it just reminds you of like to live a life worth living and what, what's important in life. Mm. And, um, that's a really fantastic book. Uh, Oh man, um, I'm torn between two for this last one. I'm split between Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance <laughs> and The Tao of Pooh. <laughs> okay, quick recap on on both Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It's a fantastic uh, philosophy book um, that actually inspired uh, my brother Joel is the one who kind of gave this to me. Like, you need to read this book and everything, and it's it's kind of what got us inspired to travel out West and Mm. do these different trips and stuff and to embrace, um, the experience of Mm. the journey and, um, to really just like, 
you know, embrace every moment, soak in the culture and mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's fantastic because it's, uh, you know, it's contrary to the title. I mean, obviously they talk about motorcycles in it, <laughs> but like, it's not about, you know, it's, it, they use the motorcycle maintenance as a metaphor of how these people take care of their own life. Like, mm. you know, he, you know, knows his motorcycle really well, knows its ticks and everything takes care of things right away. But then like, you know, his friend has a brand new motorcycle. He doesn't understand it. Something breaks on and he gets frustrated, but Mm. that's how he handles his life. Mm. He Mm -hmm. just, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's beautifully written. Um, so, uh, that Robert Piercig did that. And the Dao Poo. Yep. That one is, it's, it's so great because like, it's, um, for anyone interested in knowing about like Taoism or anything, it's a great introductory book because it's, it's literally, it's written like a children's book. Like okay. it's, it's, it centers around, it's centered around the Winnie the Pooh characters okay. and it's, it applies Taoist principles to like all the characters and it's, it's super like interesting what does that and mean philosophical. I'm sorry to interrupt because, but what does it mean when you say like the Tao of, cause like the, I've heard like mm-hmm. movie and book titles, like there's a movie, my buddy was like, Oh, I need to watch this movie called the Tao of Steve. What would that mm-hmm. mean to you on the server? Like, what is the Tao of, uh, what is that? Infer. D- Dao is um it's hard to describe because it's like it's all encompassing okay. like da- the Dao is everything mm. it is how do you spell every, that uh, T A O oh so it's, it's like in your blog Dao. like Taoism yep it's pronounced okay. with a D yep. okay oh really but yep um but uh yeah it's uh it's it's basically like a like the word to describe you know what is like all encompassing mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. um it's it's hard to it's it's hard to explain, but essentially that's, um, that's what it is like, uh, you know, all about. So if it's like the Tao of Pooh and in my mind, that's like everything that he exists, thinks, does mm. everything. Mm. His it's, whole self. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's his sure. being essentially. And, um, it's, it's cool because like they're in the book, they, they basically talk about how like Pooh, like Winnie the Pooh is like this all wise, all knowing being because he's so simple. Like he's mm-hmm. because, you know, he goes almost he does, stoic. Like. Yeah. Like he does good things just for the sake of doing them. Like they ask him like, Oh, I'm going to visit my friend, Kristen, Christopher Robin today. Right. Like, Oh, why? Like, do, you know, do you like hoping to get some, I don't know, hoping yeah. to get you need to borrow some him? money. You, yeah, you need yeah, to borrow yeah, something. Yeah, you need yeah, to do all yeah, that. Yeah, he's yeah. like, and he just literally responds with it's Tuesday. <laughs> so it's just like, and that's, and that's so really, sweet. And it's so cool. It's just like, <laughs> Why doesn't everyone live like that? Like, just like, I'm going to go visit my friend just because it's Tuesday or because it's Wednesday. It's, it's, and it's a quick read because it, it, yeah, it it reads like a children's book and it's just, Hmm. it's, I'm going to check those books. I think I might read that one. That sounds very interesting. It's, it's, yeah, they're all really quick reads too. Well, um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, you have to digest a little bit. I mean, it's still not a very long read, but it's very like, you need to be a little conceptually straining. Maybe. Yeah. You need to, you need to really be focusing on that one. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're knowledgeable enough in this, but like, what is the difference between like Taoism and like Buddhism? Yeah. That one's kind of hard to describe. Um, it's like, they do have a lot of similarities and it's hard to pinpoint the differences. The main things I've noticed is like, um, Buddhism is centered around the idea that like, there's suffering in the world. Like mm. it's, it's everywhere. And all we're trying to do is, is, you know, eliminate as much suffering as possible. Mm-hmm. Like they have very minimalist lifestyles because like they believe possessions bring suffering. Mm. So they just have very, you know, simple just existences. I mean, um, always taking the middle path and things like that. Um, and then Taoism is essentially like you're, the Tao is like everything and it's encompassing, you know, the world and all that exists in it. And you're just like, um, you're not trying to, you're basically just, I mean, like floating along this path. Like you, you're not trying to like, I guess, aspire towards certain things or have these expectations. You're just kind of like flowing with the river. Mm. You're not fighting against it. Mm. And like, um, and, but they both, have a lot of similarities in the, you know, in the sense of just like, you know, just being nonviolent, being self-aware, being mm. in the moment. Mm. And right. so, um, very simplistic too. Yeah. yeah so have, it's, uh, have you ever, I'm sorry. Did, oh no, I, uh, I was pretty much. Yeah. Have there. you ever read, uh, the alchemist? 
No, I haven't actually. That's Reddit. when you can I'm get the one to, sitting. I'm going to have to lend you that book. It's right over there. Mm, it's okay. read it five times. Incredible. <laughs> you could read it in a day if you It's my to. all-time favorite book. I think really? you'd really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'm definitely interested in that. I've been trying to uh, get into a new book. I started one the other day that's been super interesting. Actually, just started it yesterday. It's called, uh, I think it's literally called The Philosophy of Walking. Hmm. Hmm. And pretty much exactly how it sounds. Hmm. It's It's just talking about... You know, how with walking, there's no, it's not like running or any other sport. There's no competition with mm. it. There's no, it's it's just. It just is. It, yeah, it's simple. And it, it's, it's I don't know, like, it's so weird, like, how my books range. Like, I'll read something like that, like, super abstract and super, like, um, philosophical to doing something, you know, um, like, I read one, what was it? It was, like, super forecasting, very analytical about how to use data to your advantage and predict outcomes based it's mm. weird like yeah. I'll, I'll 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 read just about anything that's interesting mm. that's cool. <laughs> how do you get turned on to your books um i use i kind of search stuff on goodreads sometimes i use that to like keep track of my books i'm actually in a book club um but mainly they read like uh they read a lot of fiction though they read a lot of like graphic novels and mm. stuff which are interesting i mean mm. i normally don't like seek those out but then they'll recommend one and then i'll just like be really into it and it's a graphic novel so i read it in like a day right. or something like mm-hmm. that it's like okay that was pretty crazy i yeah. want to read more of them now and there's yeah, like yeah. six more i'm like dang all right. <laughs> never ending <laughs> yeah so uh definitely interesting topic should we move on to the questions we got yeah we can do that before we, we get oh yeah let me uh, about them. you have that bottle opener i do Oh, I like I like the first question that was asked. Steve, uh, yeah, Steve Webb. My <laughs> only real question is if donut holes are actually the punched out holes of a donut, or if they're just made from the same dough as the donuts. I was actually like really wrapping my head around that he one. Said, I'm just like he said. I, I expect a thought out and well formed answer. I looked into it. <laughs> did you? I did. You actually know the answer. I wow, do. Okay. Um, I, I'll I, let you guys talk about it. Yeah, first, no, though. that's fine. I <laughs> I figured out Steve was his name. Yeah, Steve couldn't let Webb, Steve down. We got to give him a real answer. I know too, we got to so. give him a real answer for that. Um, I would love to think that in some factory somewhere, there's literally like people, you know, hand making these donuts, like old school on an assembly line, and they're like punching out the holes, and then they have like a little separate bin that says like donut holes, mm-hmm. and there's like mm-hmm. people working over there, and they form them into donut <laughs> right. holes. I would love to think that. But realistically, I don't think that's actually like, I mean, but it makes you wonder because you're like, okay, like you're like looking at it and you're like, could this donut hole like fit inside of a Like, did they take this from right. the donut? But like, um, I've seen how it's made enough times to know that's not the case. It's probably just a mass assembly thing. And then they just like squirt out these little like dough, dough balls into donut holes. And that's how they're created. I'm going to say it started as real donut holes. Yeah, I, I bet you they started as real donut holes back whenever donuts were originated. Yeah. The bakers had the leftover part of the donut, and now it is just mass-produced yeah. donut holes. Oh yeah, oh I I yeah I would agree. It, ori- it definitely is... originated from the hole of the donut. <laughs> this this guy's just like wrapping his head around like <laughs> we're punching the holes in these in this we're, dough. Wait, like, we're like at this like yeah. what do all we do with all this wasted yeah. dough? What and should we this... call them? I don't know. Donut holes. <laughs> all right, Steve, go home. Yeah. We're like way <laughs> too <laughs> generic. <laughs> and then somebody's like, we should call them donut holes. Why is it home? And they get all the credit. I, I, yeah, yeah, and then they get all the credit. Yep. Poor Steve's yep. just like yep. that was my idea. Yep, I was exactly. like, go home, Steve. You're drunk. I love how I use the same the. The theoretical name of Steve is the guy who asked the question to. <laughs> I know. So, um, what, what, I'm glad you looked into the actual answer. I know. I was <laughs> going to. and I, I, Yeah. So um, there's two ways. Okay. Th- there is the actual way. So I, I, it would just depend on who's making them. Is it a, you know, a bakery or probably somebody who's cooking out? So they're, they have a, a little like punch that they mm. do kind of almost like cookie cutter style, but not really. Mm-hmm. And that actually cuts out a donut hole. And, like, I think, um, from what I understand, it like, when they pick it up, it, like, still has it. And they just, like, pop it off to yeah. the side. And they have all the donut holes So they the still side. do that oh. today? Um, some people still do. And then the and then there's, like, some machines that, like, just literally, like, the, the batter's in and it, and it drops down perfect rings. And so mm. you don't have donut holes from that. So that, they just mm. actually take them and make the donut holes. Mm. And then the, but the real traditional way... So like the the modern mass production way is a machine that literally like to make normal donuts just drops perfect like you know circles mm-hmm. and then or there's the way that people still do they hand punch them you know what I mean mm. so, like smaller bakeries probably do mm. and then there's 
also a way that wouldn't make real donut holes, but would make donuts, but not with a big mass production, is they take like they roll them into like straight like logs mm. and they connect the two ends mm. and that would make the the donuts. Mm. So there's mm. kind of like three ways it's done. But from what I understand, someone will probably tell me I'm wrong. But <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> my research. my question is, whenever donuts were originated. Why I, did they have holes in them at first, and why did donuts have holes in them? That's what I was just about why to ask. Even like, punch why even punch a hole, a hole in, in the first place? <laughs> I don't uh, know. Well, that's true. I don't. But what's yeah. what's the advantage to having the hole? Like, right. I, the, all I imagine is like is like you have a hook somewhere and you just hang. It's these easier donuts. to dip. You take a bite out, you can dip it in a well, cup that's of coffee. True too. But it it's seems way like, easier to dip a donut than a cookie and a glass of milk or a cup of coffee. It's yeah, true. but it seems like for the baker, it'd been a, it'd been a lot more work to actually make a donut with a hole in right. it than yeah. just to make a circular. Like how they have like, or uh, I'm sure it much or like right. a punchki is like yeah. a donut without a hole in it, that's true. but it's got something in it. But if you just got like a plain punchki with nothing in it, maybe that's to identify that there's no, it's like, there's no filling in this. Where can we put the filling? That's there's true. A hole in it. Yeah. So, huh. I'm just spitballing there with theories, it's but possible. <laughs> I wonder when donuts were invented. Fact I don't check. know. Yeah. Fact check know. that. Good question, Steve. All right. What else? We got? <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> good question, I'm just going to go to the line. Um, we answered Cindy's question. How many, how many states have you yep. accomplished and what states are left? The answer mm-hmm. is five. Yeah. So there's about 47. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Well, the Dakotas. Uh, no, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, somebody does say something about Puerto Rico yeah. too. So yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, what's going to be the most difficult state to get? So I was wondering how they wrote the question. Like, <laughs> like, like if it was going to, if they meant difficult, you can't like literally there's run. not enough yeah. miles in Rhode Island for a marathon. It'll be like an hour like, back a hundred times. I kind of took the question a different way. Cause I, at, when like I first read it, like I was thinking like, did they mean financially most difficult or like the hardest means to travel to this location? Um, and I was like thinking of like originally, like if they meant like, it'd be super expensive to travel there, like, you know, California or Hawaii or something like that, or, or a place that's really rural, like North Dakota or something. It's like, I guess those could be difficult in that sense. But then I also thought, or did they mean difficult, like physically Mm -hmm. difficult? Because like I said before, I'm all about the experience for the marathon and I'm not going to pick like most of the time I don't even pick a fast course or any one thing that I'm going to get an awesome time on. I pick something that's just like, that sounds hardcore. That sounds really cool. Right. Like there was this one I was uh, looking into yesterday and now I'm forgetting the name of it, but uh, literally it's in New Mexico and death March is in the title. I do remember that. <laughs> oh my so, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, right. I want to say it's like, you know, it's right in like March or April, like not a, not a, you know, mild time of the year. And it's, it's to, um, it's to honor the, uh, soldiers who defended the Philippines islands in world war two. Oh, nice. And, um, yeah. And it's like straight up in the middle of this desert. And of course they have an option to where you can strap a 30 pound, 35 pound pack to you mm. while you run for like the hardcore people and stuff. And naturally if I were to do it, I would do that Mm -hmm. (laughs) just for the sake of the experience and stuff like, all right, let's do it. So like physically wise, like, yeah, out of the ones I've come across, that would definitely be up there for the hardest (laughs) like Mm -hmm. physical marathon to do that one. And I would love to do big Sur marathon in California, which I guess combines, you know, would be difficult, I guess in a sense, financially or just getting out there. But then also physically it is a very hard marathon. It's regarded because just the elevation change, yeah. mm. it changes. It's it changes so much in elevation throughout that throughout race. The course. Yeah, mm. it's right on Highway One though. Like it's a very scenic, cool mm. marathon. Like um, right on the coast. But yeah, it's crazy elevation change. Do you drive or fly, or is it just a variation? It's what, a variation. What you drive? Did you drive to all the ones you've done so far? Or did you fly? Uh, I home? flew to Arizona for that one. I'm gonna fly to Nevada for that one. Um, and actually, yeah, uh, remind me to talk about that one because I'm super excited about Nevada. that one. Yeah, uh, but then um, I drove to Minnesota. I drove to Boston the first year, but then, or wait, no, we flew to Boston the first year, but then we've been driving ever since. Oh, nice. How many years have you done it? Uh, three three oh. years. Are you going to continue to do that every year? Yeah, I think I'm going to work it into my schedule just because it's so, it's... I mean, iconic. it's just such a fun, cool experience. Yeah. And I mean, it's like probably it's, the most iconic. It's and yeah, marathon. it is. It's, yeah. it's like the only one I've really yeah. heard about. And it's just like yeah, and it's where I meet like so many people. So mm. it's just like such an iconic one. Is that the I biggest? Pretty big deal. It's yeah. I mean, it's size wise, it's actually there are marathons that are bigger, but it's definitely the most well known and iconic mm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like uh, 
so it's a mix of um of how I get there and everything. Uh, but yeah, that one in Nevada, I'm super excited for. It's called the ET Marathon, <laughs> and it's in Rachel, Nevada, like middle of nowhere. It it starts on the night of a full moon at midnight. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and it finishes by Area 51. Oh man, I'm so stoked. That is. Oh cool. no shit. Yeah, I'm so excited. Like uh, it's on he- Highway 375, which is reported to have the most UFO sightings. Dude, <laughs> really? Yeah, and like I'm just like I'm. I'm excited, but also like borderline terrified because I've been, and it doesn't help you because I want to get sucked yeah, up right next. Just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> sucker, like I'm gonna pass that guy. Like. Just wear really heavy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Really just wear that 35 pound rucksack again. I, ju- I just, I just think abduction. of like for all the Zelda fans out there, like uh, you wear those iron boots. Yeah, and you just like freaking like stomping through, like just like I'm gonna get a terrible time. But it's like no one's picking me up. <laughs> You're the only one who yeah. finished. How did you find that on that website? Um, actually, yeah, it was on that website, nice. and then um, I was like looking at it, Very and I was cool. like, I, I gotta do this one, mm. like it. And I've been, it hasn't been helping because I've been watching a lot of like alien shows on Netflix, and which makes me even more paranoid that I'm gonna like get abducted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just, isn't Roswell? Isn't that in New Mexico though? Or they had New that, Mexico. Yeah, yeah, that's where they Roswell had the crash and everything. Yeah. But like, yeah, there's a lot of weird activity that happens out there and stuff. So it's like. Uh, it's it, especially because it starts at midnight and they oh, like make you wear like reflective gear and stuff That's like badass. it's super dark. When obviously, is it? it's um August twenty sixth. I want to say it's on that Saturday, which you know Saturday slash Sunday, starting mm. at midnight. Um, but yeah, Joel and I are flying out there on that Friday, meeting up with one of my friends who lives in Henderson, right outside Vegas, mm-hmm. and hanging out for the day with her and everything, and then driving up to Rachel, which is like three hours north mm-hmm. from where she is. And then doing that, and then Joel and I are renting a car, and then driving through California and exploring that for like the next like week. Nice, That's, dude. That's really we're going cool. to a Joshua Tree in Yosemite. So yep. Like, yep. Very so cool. excited. Yeah, it's yeah, we're super sick. What's excited Joel do? I run and just get drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I'm trying to convince him to do the the 5K, which he, he'll pro- he'll probably do. But yeah. yeah, like we're just anyone can like, run three miles, <laughs> <laughs> right? But um. Yeah, no, like, it's so funny because, like, he was explaining that, like, the whole time while I was out running that first marathon, like, he, you know, him and my, my parents, like, went out, they got breakfast, yeah. and they're, like, telling me about this cool breakfast spot, <laughs> they even took a nap, they did, like, all this <laughs> stuff, and it's just, like, meanwhile, I'm out running the entire time. <laughs> That's cool. It was just, like, glad you had a good morning. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that was Kimberly. Uh, Katie Smith, which state are you most looking forward to running in? So I thought long and hard about that one because I'm just like, there's so many, I mean, they're all interesting for their own ways, but for whatever reason, I'm really drawn to, I'm torn between, I'm I'm really drawn to Hawaii for some reason. I've been to Hawaii in high school and like just loved it out there. And, and like, there's an ultra marathoner who like, he literally every day throughout the week did a, a separate ultra on all the Hawaiian islands. Mm-hmm. It's freaking crazy. I mean, what's his like, name? Do you know, uh, the name's escaping me. He's, uh, probably the only, pr- if you Google that, I'm sure. He's, I've heard yeah. Of this yeah, guy. yeah. Yeah. Google that. And he's also like, he's also vegan as well, which is even more inspiring. Um, cause yeah, I've, I've been a vegetarian since October, mm-hmm. not quite vegan yet. It's hard to give up cheese, mm, Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's like super inspiring stuff. Cause this dude is, is a hundred percent on a plant-based diet and he's like, I mean, hmm. just throws away that whole, like, like, uh, I guess misconception of like, you need protein or you need meat in your diet and all this stuff. Mm. Cause like, clearly mm-hmm. you, you don't. Right. Sure. <laughs> very interesting. I mean, yeah, it's a very interesting guy and I'm forgetting his name. Apparently he came out to Boston one year when I was out there and I was like, Oh, I could have met the guy. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. like, Dang it. But, um, yeah, the names escaped me, but really interesting guy. He's on some Netflix documentaries on, um, actually on the food industry. If you ever look up, I, I'm trying to remember the, names of them he's probably I, i've watched so many on there i think he's which one was it it was like one i think maybe it's called food inc or something but then mm-hmm. there's like fed up and then there's a bunch of food documentaries mm-hmm. on netflix mm-hmm. yeah he's bound to be in one of them <laughs> if not all of this them like yeah. for an ultra marathon <laughs> just, runner. Yep. Just, yeah it'll uh yeah, it's just like not on like a head of lettuce the entire <laughs> yeah, interview yeah. <laughs> exactly but um so in a weird way like i'm really drawn to hawaii um really drawn to alaska I think just those really isolated places. Yeah. 49 and 50. <laughs> yeah. 49. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 49 and 50. All right. Lois Fury. P- yep. Puerto Rico isn't a state yet, but it is part of America. Will you consider running there? Oh, definitely. You I would, know, I would love you, to do more. Like, even though they're, you know, technically part of America and everything. Um, yeah, I would love to do more like international ones. Like, Would uh, you wait until you accomplish all 50 or no? People, do they run a marathon Probably. in like... Or is it, you know, it's just kind of funny because a marathon's miles, but it's like the only race that's not, you know what I mean? Everything's 5, 8, 10K. I just, I, that right. realization just hit me. Like, do they still... But it's do, measured in like kilometers. It's like 26.2. Mm-hmm. Or 26.2 miles. Yep. Um, I'm just wondering oh, yeah, that's, like yeah, how many yeah. kilometers. I mean, obviously they run yeah. marathons. That's not what I meant. I can't even do that conversion. The, the conversion, I guess, is what the I was kilometers asking about. would be for that. But, um, but yeah, anyway. 47.9. <laughs> so you would, you would do Puerto Rico. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said Puerto before, Rico. I'm like I'm open to all new. Oh, shit. Shit. No, the camera just keeps shutting off. Okay, we're having a good conversation. Oh now. yeah, for sure. We, oh, this is why oh. we need an intern, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I would love to be an intern. So yes, to Puerto Puerto Rico. Yes, to Puerto Rico, just because like, and I haven't actually dug into what races are there. I'm sure I'd find one that soaks in the culture and everything. Um, I'm sure I could find one to where I'm like running away from bulls or just something crazy mm, like that yeah. and like obviously i'd be more gravitated towards that one it's like i don't care about a fast time like get me like running Experience, through the city yeah. like like you know chaos is going everywhere like just like it's all about the experience for me like i was talking to um so long story short yes i uh, i would i would just have to do like one that just sounds really cool and stuff like that which i'm sure i could find mm-hmm. but yeah i was talking to an individual out in arizona and they were like three marathons in California that I would love to do. And I'm torn on which one, like big Sur is very scenic, very, um, uh, very challenging. There's a redwood forest Mm. marathon. That's literally like all in the redwood forest, which would be amazing. Trail marathons are a different, like, um, beast in their own too. Yeah, no kidding. So that, yeah, yeah, they're they're incredibly hard. Um, and then, uh, and then, He's he really recommended the San Francisco Marathon and and the way he's just sold me on the explanation because he was like there's no better way to experience San Francisco and he like walked me through it he said you're passing by the bakery you can smell all the like fresh donuts oh, and stuff nice, like you, like you're running through the streets that normally like you can't even drive through because it's so congested but they're the streets are closed down for the marathon uh-huh. right? and you're just like running through it and getting to experience just I don't know like like the I don't want to say solitude because obviously there's a lot of people around, but like you're really capturing that environment. Mm-hmm. And then you're like by the coast too. You get the whiff of the ocean. He said like you, you cross the bridge and like just get to see so much scenic stuff. Nice. And like, and he said like, you know, people are out just having a good time drinking or just uh, like tripping on something and <laughs> like, like cheering you on doing all that, like right. everyone's family and stuff. It's like, man, that's really selling me. Cause that that's, yeah, you're like, <laughs> it's all about the experience and and i for a big city i mean that's the best way to experience it is just literally sure. running through mm-hmm. it now this is my question and I, mm-hmm. I don't know if these exist but would you do a marathon in like winter time in like yeah the for sure um northern more states do those exist yeah i'm sh- i'm sure they exist to a certain extent um like with snow on the ground and yeah i'm I haven't dug into them extensively, but I'm sure they exist because I feel like... It'd be challenging. Um, I mean, or at least like ones to where it's like, you know, borders on to where it's starting really to get to cool. that. I don't know. I mean, obviously there's not as many going on during mm-hmm. that time, but I, I think for the most part, like, you know, marathon season pretty much ends like mm. end of October. But I'm sure there's probably those off the wall ones mm, yeah. that are I mean, there's gotta random. Be. There's gotta be somebody's some... missing. Somebody's missing uh, right. the ball. On that I'm sure there's, there's uh, and if they, if there's not any now, there will be eventually, there's going to be some guy out there. That's just going to be like, yeah, we should run a marathon in Alaska, you know, when in the freezing. middle of winter. Yeah. Like it'll be great. It's, we'll do yeah, it's it's like, like, darkness. And then, yeah. and then it's just like, okay, sign me up. And then people <laughs> like crazy like me, will be like, yeah, I'm down for it. <laughs> like, and here's a pistol to uh, defend yourself from any uh, polar bears. <laughs> yeah. Complimentary pistol <laughs> for you. <laughs> Registration okay. tag is 1200 bucks. Here's a 44 Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I get a badge? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we don't really worry about people running this one. Bandit. <laughs> What makes you passionate about running Danielle Neal or Daniel Neal? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Danny. Um, yeah. Like what makes me passionate about it? It's funny because I've been running my whole life. Like my dad kind of brought me into it and stuff and took me on runs as a kid. And it's weird because I never growing up and stuff. I didn't really have the appreciation for it. Like I do now. Like mm-hmm. it was just kind of, I was kind of going through the motions with it. Like 
I did it because I was good at it, which sounds like a jerk thing to say kind of, but I was just like, I didn't have that appreciation. I was just like, I was like, Oh, whatever, you know, I'll go to practice. I'll do all this. Okay. I guess. And like, it was just, you know, something I just did. Mm -hmm. But then, um, and then I gained more of appreciation an appreciation for it in high school. And then I got into college got a scholarship for it so like okay like you know continue doing this you know, like I don't want my running career to end because I was getting a lot faster and then um did that and then you know we'd go on trips and travel with that mm. and then kind of got introduced to that idea mm. and it's like man yeah I can kind of combine the two and right. this is pretty cool and stuff and like um yeah so uh and then I kind of took like a brief hiatus from it once I I got done at SVSU to where I was, I was like you know, I would eat, sleep and breathe running 24 seven. And I was like, okay, I need to take a little break from it. But then I'd stepping away from it. Like it, it was nice because it made me realize like how much I needed running and how Mm. much I depended on it. Like it literally like kept me sane. Mm. Mm. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, yeah. Like I, so I think what I wanted to do is like, I love the idea of like running on my own terms and that's what I do now. So like, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously still a competitive person and it's, I, I'll still be really stoked if I get like a PR or like personal record for those who don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, cause I, I always have to describe that and I forget not everyone knows I that. I think like it's a pretty generic just like term though. I know. You know? Yeah. I know. And like, um, like if you've ever watched the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, and it's so running on my own terms and just like, so I think that's what keeps the drive going. I mean, I feel like the metaphor can be drawn between that and my own life, you know, pretty well of just yeah. like, it's, it's all about that self-improvement. Like I tell people all the time, like running is relative. It's not, yeah. you know, Green. it's, it's, it's not just like a, you know, this person's better than this person, better than this person. You can look at times and do all that. You could, if you want, but that's, you know, that doesn't make it fun in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like it's all about like, show me somebody who like started running or like that guy in Arizona who's, you know, like lost 150 pounds and like worked his way up to running a marathon, that improvement, that's more impressive to me than somebody who's been running their whole life. And just like, and you know, like as, as it's super competitive and and does all that because Mm -hmm. like, no, it's, I mean, that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's lifestyle changes. And Mm -hmm. like, I mean, relatively speaking, he improved a lot and he's going to continue to improve if he keeps it up. Like, um, so yeah, it's all about just being, uh, being better than the person you were yesterday, yeah. I guess. So. I got a question. Who is uh, Roger Bannister? <laughs> <laughs> he is the man who broke the four minute mile, and then seemingly, <laughs> magically, yeah. well, it was it was deemed impossible by mm-hmm. the, the the science community. Right. And as soon as Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile, I think within like, months. Yeah, well, maybe that maybe a, a, a relatively short amount of time. Like I know ten that. guys did it. Like they yeah. just they like that's just an example of like thinking. It's, no, that's that's and and I love that story just because it it, it it's such it's so like um it it explains the human mind so well oh my God, and how totally. like it's literally a mental roadblock. Yeah, yeah. and they it's, just it's, told they were everyone said it's impossible. Then as yeah. soon as he did it, people were like, oh, it's possible. When was this? Like the forties? Uh, no, it was. I should know way this. later than that, right? So yeah, it, no, I'd it was. Say later than that, I want to say like, I could be wrong. I almost want to say it's like seventies. Yeah, I would say late seventies, eighties. Probably. There's a movie I, guess, guess, I don't know. There? I've seen. Probably. There's got to be. I've seen <laughs> I don't know if you. <laughs> guys, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There's got to be. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I, I think like five to ten guys broke it like a month later. All it's they insane. needed to know was it was possible, and then as soon as they knew it was possible, right. people now now look. Well, but interest. I was just making oh, a joke. Oh, for sure. Thing, and it's, yeah. it's, no, it's, it's crazy because I mean, I, I felt that in, in my own, you know, right. Running career and everything too. Like it's huge when you break that minute threshold oh. for the longer distance races, because as soon as you do, it's like, you know, you, you, you never go back. No, like, yeah. it's like, as soon as you break that barrier, like it, it then you're like in that threshold and then it becomes easier yeah. and that's, it's weird. It's so hard to describe, but yeah, it's it's literally a mental barrier. Yeah. What was that badass thing Nike tried doing? I don't think they did it, but they had Oh, they were pacing the guys for the the, the world's fast uh, was it a marathon? Yeah, I think, I think it, was. it was a marathon where they were they had the pace car and they were trying they tried, to beat the record. Wasn't it like uh, five minute miles for I a think marathon? It was fast. I think it was yeah, sub five or yeah, something. Yeah, sub five. It, it, it was, was incredible. Insane. It was, it was stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Like, like I'd that's say ninety percent of Americans yeah. couldn't run I'd say ninety five percent of Americans probably couldn't run one sub five mile. Yeah, it's 
I know, like that. I don't think they did. That it. took me no, till my. They, 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 close. I, they were close. It took to my junior year in high school before I could even break five minutes in a mile. Like that, it, it's it takes. Fast. It takes a while. Yeah, but and that's on moving. the same token though. To you, you guys are both like distance runners though too, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. To run, I mean, not to do oh, the Nike no, thing, sure. but to run one minute sub five is a lot yeah. different than being able to run like five that. minutes sub five, and yeah, let oh, alone like a marathon. It's, you know, it's it's so weird how I'm how I'm wired with uh, distance running and stuff like that because like yeah, the shorter distances, I'm really not that fast. Like in a sprint, I'm really mm. not. But like I can keep a relatively fast pace for a long time, right? And so like it, it's crazy. Like when I explain this to people, like. And it's probably the mental barrier too. Like so many people think it's so weird because like, um, like in a, in a straight 400 meter dash, I've never been able to, to, to run it faster than a minute, like 60 seconds. And it's weird because, because like, but like the sprinters and everything, even junior high sprinters can run in under a minute and maybe it's a mental barrier and stuff, but I've never been able to even like my college career and stuff like that. But like the last lap of my 10 K for the, you know, when I, when I ran a personal best, I ran the last lap in 68 uh, for my 25th lap. Oh, well, I mean, I know it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's eight seconds is still quite a bit for a 400, but spread out over that long and how I'm not like trying to do that. I bet you could do it if it's, you were doing a 400 in a race scenario with people who were comp- uh, within your same uh, speed category. See, that's what I thought. Um, but then I, but then I got the time. I was like, okay, coach, like what I run right. 60 flat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Not even, you know, uh, cause, and it's funny. That's like a big, you know, running joke. Huh? No. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like it's, uh, there's, a, there's a big, difference. <laughs> yeah. but there, there is a big difference between, you know, <laughs> one minute flat and, uh, you know, 59. Oh yeah. Point nine yeah. nine. It's a whole other <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a about, completely different realm. Yeah, correct me if I'm mistaken, but about point oh one seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, it's actually point oh oh one. No. All right. So what do we got next? Yep. Uh, Emily, doer, do you have a dream course to run? How do you pick which state to do next? Yeah, there's no real strategy to the ones I'd. Well, well okay. Let me start with the first question. Um, dream course. Not really. I'm kind of open to different experiences. Like, I, I mean, I like doing the big ones eventually. Like, I'll probably do the New York Marathon eventually mm-hmm. and, like, the Chicago Marathon and things like that. Like, the big ticket U.S. ones. But for the most part, I mean, yeah, just, like, um, I don't know, just one I think of off the top of my head. Just, like, the just the cool experience ones in the different states. Yeah. Like, the like the Big Sur Marathon in California I think would be really awesome to do one day. Um, that's one I can think of off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Uh the CT marathon coming up is a big bucket list one. Like I'm so excited to do that one. So, and I guess that ties into the next question too, of how I pick them. Like I just, it's, it's really, there's really not much strategy to it. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll form a trip around my marathons and sometimes I'll be just going on a trip and I'm like, well, marathons out there right now. And I'll like tie that into the trip. So yeah. Cause that's what I did for Washington. Like I was already going out there with my brother to visit my cousins you may as well just and and i was just like what marathons are going on out there and then i and then i literally looked one up and it was in the redmond watershed like kind of by seattle it's like three or four hours north from him Mm -hmm. and i was like i'm gonna squeeze this into a day so like while i'm out there it's like why not yeah so how often do you run now so i i try to run every day but that doesn't happen anymore (laughs) like i um but uh I'd say for the most part, I run at least, I should be running more, but at least like three, four, at, at least four times a week, I'd say. Three or so four. you like, you stay in marathon shape? Like if you can just go out somewhere? Hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I, I try, I mean, it's, it's, uh, and I'm not going to lie. I do have genetics in my favor because like, I feel like I can bounce back or just, yeah you know, hop in one or do something much quicker than the average person can. Uh. But, um, but yeah, I mean like I, I'm pretty much running all year round Mm -hmm. all all the time anyway. And then, uh, and then I sign up for these quite a bit in advance. Like even when I was looking at that trip Mm. and we were already kind of roughly planning it, I was like, okay, I think I can get in marathon shape and, a few months or, oh, or something okay. like that. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I'm, I, it's not like an impromptu, like while I'm out there. It wasn't like a couple weeks out. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be that close. So, 
that's like the one thing in life I do plan ahead, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, I was like, okay, ahead. I should think about these things so more in advance. Die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Joel, <laughs> why didn't you put the towels in the dryer? <laughs> and I totally did for anyone wondering. <laughs> I did. He just wanted to make a joke. I'm, he said, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Do you think you may ever set up a race? And just so, where would you like to set one up? So it's funny because, um, uh, I actually talked about that with him because um, so kind of I'll try to make this short like uh, so my family used to own a hotel in Shaftsburg, which is like kind of a rural it's it's right off the highway, but it's like, I don't know, like 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes away from Lansing. Mm. But it's just kind of like a small town. It has a small town feel for sure, but it's not too far from the highway. And um uh, my mom's side of the family, they owned a hotel there for generations. Mm -hmm. They still, they still own it. Um, but since at least like, it's cool cause they're like carvings in the brick outside and it's mm. at least like we've seen them as, you know, as, as old as like the 1890s. Mm. Oh wow. And, um, yeah, like it's, so it's this old hotel. I used to actually go there. My brother and I would go there, um, every Christmas Eve to visit my great, great aunt um, and then she passed away when I was in like junior high and unfortunately the house kind of, you know, it, it, uh, it went, it kind of fell apart a little bit mm -hmm. and just like kind of got neglected and stuff. So Joel has this idea, this rough idea of like buying it back and like getting it back to its former glory, which I think would be really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he flips houses and I'm sure he could do it and everything. It's a big, it's a pretty big task. I mean, it's uh, it's a pretty big building, but like. Um, what I thought would be really cool to do, and this is just like a rough idea we were spitballing, like if he got, you know, doing that and then we turned it into like a bed and breakfast mm. or like, or like a certain writer's retreat or something cool like that. Right. But then to like build up hype for it, cause I went for a run out there and I was like, it would actually be really cool to like do a race here. And then that could even like build hype for, um, for the hotel mm -hmm. and, and the launching of it and stuff. And like. So it was just like a rough mm. idea we had. But be I've cool. been thinking about it quite a bit. Like just that to do cool. like a 5K because it's, it's very like secluded and um, and it's just, I don't know. It's it's just kind of a peaceful place to run because they're just fields and just like, you know, you see a house every once in a while out there and just like it's mm. just nice and flat and there's some shade in some spots and like it's, yeah. you know, a mm -hmm. nice little like secluded cool area to just do a race. I mean, you can realistically set up a race anywhere and I feel like, and I feel like it wouldn't be that hard either because if you go through the logistics of like closing down the road and doing all that, I mean, not many, like four people will be disgruntled maybe for <laughs> yeah, like an hour. Yeah, yeah, they'll be all <laughs> it's right. like, oh, I'm slightly inconvenienced. <laughs> oh, what are they out doing? Oh, they're running. What's going on? Okay. Yeah, yeah they'll be all right. No <laughs> and we'll call it run the shaft. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, D, mm -hmm. what's been your favorite that you've run so far, place, experience, and people? Yeah, I'd probably be that petrified forest that marathon. Is yeah, we yeah, we, we I, did a good job. We actually answered most of the I know, yeah. I was gonna say, like actually, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty content with that answer there. Okay. That one's just that sounds it's just badass. so peaceful. The people, the oh, it's just so cool. Arizona is just a really fun state. Yeah. I just loved everything about that trip. Next time. Okay. Uh next, Andrew Myers, would you ever consider running any fifty mile mountain races? Yes. <laughs> I mean it, it's it's funny because like uh it's weird when I get in those mentalities because I actually watched like a documentary on Netflix. It's it's called, uh, gosh, what is the name of it? Uh, I don't know if it's called the Berkeley Marathon or the Berkeley mm. Race or just something. Mm -hmm. It's super interesting if you ever watch it. It's literally this, you know, this guy who was a longtime distance runner. He started this race and it's it's like it's, it's the most unique race I've ever seen because it's a hundred mile race. Oh, wow. And, um, like, and it's, it's bizarre cause it's like these giant loops and, um, you do, how do they describe it? I think you do like four loops and it's like 25 miles each loop or they, they roughly estimate, mm, but right. realistically it's, they said it's, it's probably closer to like 27 or 28 miles. <laughs> so like you're actually running further than a hundred. It's just like the hundred mile that race, but it's actually but at that point, that really, sounds way cooler than even the hundred seven mile, like the hundred yeah. mile race is way But at better. that point it's just like, it, yeah, it's like, oh, might as well. You're already running that much. Yeah. They, um, it's, I don't know. It's like a weird combination of like physical endurance but also wit too because like you're running through these 
I mean, there's a bunch of elevation change. You're like running through like these like shrubs and like things getting like cut up and everything. Like it's like rural mm. forest. Mm. And you actually have like a, you're given like a photocopy of the map and you can't use it. You have to, to draw it to the best of your ability and use your drawn map as your course. No shit. It's weird. Like, That's it's just cool. like, so you have to like have a sense of direction and, and knowledge of that and be smart in that regard of just like, you know, packing food, like doing all that, figuring out your sleep and, and mm. like, you have to be very strategic. Yeah. And like, and it's crazy because you go to these certain points and he rips out pages of a book and your bib number is like <laughs> something like your bib number would be 24 and you have to grab page 24 from the book to prove you were there. Right. And like put it like in your bag. Oh, that's sweet. It's weird, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's, that is and, cool. and like, it, it sounds like, I mean, so many people would probably be in like, who in the right mind would ever do that? That mm -hmm. sounds that sound cool. insane. But like that stuff like gets me excited. I'm just like, that sounds so cool because mm -hmm. it's like, it's literally like, and that, I guess backtracking to that original question, what inspires you to run and do all that? Like, um, something I've learned after doing marathons is like, I've never done something that's more physically and mentally grueling than a marathon right. like and and the sense of accomplishment like euphoria. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly but but you know and it can only go up from there yeah. but like um but yeah i mean obviously because that's all i have to compare it to but like it's i mean the sense of accomplishment you feel i mean mm -hmm. you it's it's unreal it's just like i feel like i can do anything mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. and you just feel like feel so alive from it so as weird as it sounds, I'm more drawn to those like physically grueling and tough races. Like how, like how tough am I? Like, yeah. like how, what can I physically put myself through yeah. and, and walk away from it or hobble away from it or crawl away from it? Well, like you said earlier, it's <laughs> about like not getting comfortable and constantly yeah. just progressing and yep. pushing yourself too. Oh, for sure. And I think that same idea can, can be applied to life too. Mm, I mean, I think absolutely. it's almost dangerous to be comfortable. Oh, you want to oh, force yeah. yourself yeah. to be a little uncomfortable absolutely. sometimes because it's like, that's what pushes you to actually like move forward to do things mm -hmm. and to, yeah, that's agree, really where 100%. growth happens. So you found that race just through like a a Netflix documentary? Yeah. So, um, that so yeah, sweet. I mean, so naturally I get turned on by the idea of just like, you know, 50 mile mountain race. Yeah. Sign me up. Right. Why yeah. not? And then yeah. like, and then I'll tell myself, yeah, I really need to, you know, I'm going up a mountain. I need to train right. do hills and do all this. And like, sometimes I'm good at it, but then sometimes I'm just like, man, I should have trained more or did yep. something. Yep. But then I'm just like, well, it's too late now. I just got to do it. <laughs> yeah. like, is that what an ultra is considered like a hundred over a hundred or what? It's uh, yeah. I mean, I've met people who've done hundred mile races and it's bad cause I should know this, but like, I almost want to say, yeah, that's, it's cause I, cause now that I think about it, I'm not really sure what 50 milers are labeled. And so, cause they're, you know, they have 50 mile race. I mm. pretty sure, pretty sure ultra is the hundred mile yeah. threshold. Right. Did you run with Thomas Keen at SVSU? He, uh, I, I know him and everything. Um, he, I believe, I believe his first year there was the year I left mm -hmm. or the, maybe the following year. So I didn't actually like run with him on the team, but, um, we, I yeah. went, I mean, went to known him since preschool. We were yeah. best friends forever. I mean, we ran cross together. Right. So like I, yeah, I know Thomas really well. Oh yeah, for sure. What, what did he run out in Washington though? Was that it, like a, it was a 50 K he won a 50 K. Oh nice. He got a first place and then he just, then he just did a 50 mile, I think it was 50 mile mountain race in Washington and got fourth. Really? First one ever. He just did it like three days ago. That's insane. Yeah, he killed it. I, That's I, that, so I'm awesome. Does he live in like Washington? That. Yeah, he just moved out there. Yeah, so I saw yeah, he moved out there. He's, he's a great distance runner. Yeah, so yeah, good for oh, him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mad no, that props. Was, That's impressive. That, that is impressive. What he's doing, I know. So. I'll work my way up to that eventually. I just need to run more consistently. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Chelsea. How does one not die while running a marathon? That <laughs> must have been a new one. <laughs> Is that the last question? Uh, yeah, it yeah, was like I an hour ago. I remember seeing that, and I'm like, that's a good one for it. That, that is true, and I ask myself that all the time. With actually. the emoji with the, uh, with the <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. monocle. That's, that's <laughs> it was like a quite ugly time. <laughs> How do you not die? Yeah, it's funny because I've never actually done a half marathon. Like I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do marathons right. now. And, but like every time I'm running a marathon, I get about to the halfway point. And I'm just like, I should have done a half. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm just like, well, it's too late now. <laughs> and then like, but um, it's it's hard to describe because like it really is. I mean, once you get down to those last few miles, like it is a test of will. I mean, it is all mental at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Like nothing 
in my opinion, you can't really do as much physically to prepare yourself for right. that wall and that feeling. You can do some simulated workouts and exercises and know kind of what it's like, but being actually in it, it's so much different, in my mm. opinion. Mm. Like, I mean, there's so many different things that can go right or go wrong and things like that. And it's, <laughs> it's, it, it is hard. I mean, and as, as weird and cliche as it sounds like it gets easier as you do them more and get more yeah. experience. That's really what's, but I guess you could apply that with anywhere of life. I mm. mean, the more you do something, more experience you have, the easier it is to understand or know, mm. you yeah. know, how to handle it. I was cool. going to say something. I, was, I just forgot what I was going to say. Lots of good questions. <laughs> lots of good answers. This was an incredibly long... Where are we? <laughs> We're on two hours and 24 minutes. Holy crap, it's been that long. It's a long show. This might be our longest show yet. Holy crap. I had something for you, Eric. <laughs> Off of that. I don't remember what it was. Can't think of it. Idiot. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, well, but I did I mean, ask you... Well, I, yeah. I got a couple questions still. Okay. I did ask you before we started the show, and Tyler made me wait. Okay. How long have you been growing that mustache? Oh, yes. yeah, that's right. That's the real question. <laughs> if you're listening chops. to the audio, you got to right? you got to <laughs> go to the video because he has a very impressive mustache. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so... This all has been going on since end of February. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I, and it's weird to think it's been that long. Because, yeah, like, and I, I had the beard all going on for up until, like, pretty much right before we went to, Joel and I went to Washington and Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was just like, you know, I'm kind of getting bored with the beard again. I was like, and I thought I was just going to go clean shaven at first, but I was like, you know, I have a lot of facial hair to work with. I was like, I feel like I can make this fun. So literally like every day at work, I just changed it. <laughs> I saw that. You know, like yeah. I started with like the civil war beard with, yeah. like, that, with like just shave in the middle, yeah. but then having those sides yeah. like, and then, uh, <laughs> civil war beard. and then I, yeah. And then I had the chops with like, with like the Fu Manchu and then I shaved the Fu Manchu part off and like curled the mustache. Uh -huh. And I was just doing it ironically at first, but then I was just like, I was like, well, I'm going out to Portland. I'll fit right in. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll wear it out there. And then I got back and I'm just like, all right, I'll keep it a little yeah, bit longer. Yeah. And, you know, see, I was like, why not? Like, it's, it's kind of part of the fun of it. Like yeah. I've never been one to really blend in too often. <laughs> just like, I always have to be doing something weird to That's like, okay. stand out. Makes I, it fun. I just started watching Portlandia last <laughs> night. Oh, it's so good. Dude, it's hilarious. What is that guy in? Like the main guy that like writes it. What other movies? Fred Armisen. He's yeah. uh he did stuff with SNL. Yeah, um, yeah for that's a while. where he's from. That's mainly where he's from. But, uh, could... but yeah, he's in he's in some weird stuff. Like I've seen him do like have parts on like Tim and Eric's awesome show, which is like the yeah. weirdest show yeah. I've oh, ever yeah. watched. Oh, like yeah. he'll randomly be in episodes of that. I'm like, oh all right, you know. Is that what but, I like, know him from his SNL then? It might be. Oh, yeah, he's because yeah, I can't think of any movies off the top of my head that he's like I don't know. I'm sure he's been in indie stuff or just yeah. some smaller things, but I think SNL is the main one. Hmm. Yeah, I started watching it last night. Remember, when I was like, I can't. Yeah. What, what should I watch on Netflix? And I remember somebody telling me about it. <laughs> it's a funny show. It's. I mean, they're just super cliche about like everything Portland, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah I mean, that's what I'm taking from it. But it's him oh yeah, and this chick, and but they dress up as all these different like characters. They'll dress up as like good girls and shit, <laughs> and it is so cliche. It's hilarious. it's it's great. It's funny because um well uh fellow um clio native and everything to um chris coon actually is mm. the one who like pointed me towards that show oh, in the first he? place and i was like man this is hilarious and then that actually kind of made me want to go out to portland to really? begin with is it's it like, true it actually is <laughs> like the, like a lot of people it's it's not far off portland's super weird that's <laughs> like, so crazy like there are these people you know with the pedicabs like that like pulling people around and doing that. like there is just some weird stuff like people are like very literate out there they read a ton like really? there's a huge bookstore that's like a grocery store people are walking around with like shopping carts full of I've books of like that, walking yeah. around it's like holy my shit. gosh like this is awesome <laughs> like, like their you song don't in the see first this. episode is like we want to go somewhere where they keep it 90s or yeah. something yeah. like that oh yeah like <laughs> you see the weirdest stuff out there i mean like you'll see i remember one of the first years i went out there i just saw like a, like a 40 or 50 year old dude just like like skateboarding outside like it was literally like the 90s again not longboarding or anything he was skateboarding really <laughs> like and just That's like so and cool. he just looked like he walked out of the 90s I'm like i th i may have just been making things up in my head but i swear i've probably seen boom boxes and other random things out there like people <laughs> just do weird stuff out there and i'm just like okay like i can get into this, this is cool. awesome. would you recommend a portland trip 
Oh, definitely. I love Portland. It's seriously like one of my favorite cities I've been Did to. Did you Airbnb out there? Uh, well, it's funny because my, my cousin has an Airbnb in Vancouver, Washington, which is like 20 minutes away from Portland. Um, but yeah, like I, so I've never actually like stayed in Portland, just kind of on the outskirts, but yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend it. Actually, mm. my first Airbnb experience other than staying at my cousin's place, which I don't really count, um, was, uh, it was in Kirkland right outside Seattle. I straight up stayed in this lady's garage. Oh man. <laughs> no shit. It was a garage converted into a daycare. <laughs> No. Yeah, it was only fifty bucks for the night, so I was like, okay, and and that's and I stayed there, woke up, like I slept literally on a princess bed, and then I woke up and did that marathon in Washington the next day. That's hilarious. Yeah, it was. You actually woke up to her like starting her car to warm it up, and the garage doors closed and started freaking. It's like, like, oh no! (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's how it went. Yeah, that's cool. (laughs) And then I ran twenty six (laughs) miles. It was fantastic. Or 24, is it 24? 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, yeah. You got to add the point to. Yeah, the point to. It's important. It's interesting. It's critical. Well, Eric, is there anything else you'd like to uh, cover? Yeah, this is a platform. Is there anything else you'd like to display to the viewers or a message you'd like to send out or anything? Yeah, First I mean, off, so Eric like, with no beard is here. That's where you can find him, <laughs> on it, right? Is that yes, your, is yeah, it is. Handle? I know, which is, which is ironic because like, I really need to change my Instagram name to something that isn't consistently changing, like my facial hair. <laughs> I think it's But hilarious. then I always, I fall into that trap and then I get lazy and I'm just like, and then it's kind of funny later because it's like, well, I could play it as it's ironic because I had a huge beard, but I was Eric is, with no beard. And I was like, funny. I'm being the ironic guy. Wait, yeah, I, clearly I have a beard. I got to touch on this story yeah. before before this ends because oh, Ty, or, uh, I want to hit the camera one more time before we hit our closing notes, <laughs> but... I mean, I guess I always like to say how we are connected with our podcast guests. We all went to SVSU. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw you one time in the cafeteria with a nice mustache. I was like, oh, <laughs> dude, nice mustache. And then there was a time that we were in the cafeteria and we saw like a portrait of somebody on oh, the cool. glass yeah. up top, like whatever that's yeah. called. There's like glass <laughs> the skylight. Yeah. And I see the, like a picture of the kid with the nice mustache I saw in the cafeteria before. <laughs> yep. It's like taped to it. And you yep. see this kid just like looking out with his mustache <laughs> and like a black and white photo. How did yep. that get there? I, you know, it was really funny because I it's, saw that. It was Travis, like, right? Yeah, it was Travis. Ta- I still can't <laughs> I want remember him on the, the story podcast. on it. He, like, so bad, dude. It was so funny because I was like, asking, I was like, how did you get that picture up there? Uh-huh. And like, I don't Randy. know. I can't remember if he like, yeah, he like did something like that or he made friends with a janitor or did something. It was something <laughs> weird like Travis, that. Dude. And I was just like, I was like, I was like, okay. I was like looking up at it one day. I was like, what the heck? And he had to pick like the, the, the well, I guess it captures myself well. I'm not going to lie. I'm a pretty weird dude. So like, And it was like one of the weirdest, awkward, most awkward pictures of me. Just like making this face, like staring down at these kids while they're like eating their breakfast. And it's like, it's it's uncomfortably settling. It's the best way to describe yeah. it. Like, it's just like, th- it was settling. just like, this This makes me kind of uncomfortable that, the, you know, this picture thing is staring at me. But I feel like I could have a nice conversation with that yeah. guy. He seems interesting. If if Travis is listening, a.k.a. Okay, Randy Tyler Guerin, I want him on this podcast. Dude. He's gotta be oh, a guest. I yeah. love that. And if he and comes, I want him to play the Travis song. He's got he's got oh, a perfect Travis song. Yeah. Dude, I love that. He's got to be a guest on here. Yes, it's I agree. It's got to happen. Well, I saw that picture. Then we got put in a class together. And I know. We were yeah. like, we sat next to each other. And we were like partners. For, yeah. It was a uh, Mazen Jabber's class, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Consumer behavior. Yeah, it was a good class. And it was a good class. Um, we just kind of just stayed connected. And so, yeah. And it was funny because uh, I was talking to Chris Kuhn like before I think we even met and like really talked. And uh-huh. he was like, and he was just like talking. He's like, yeah, you know, one of my one of my friends like started this clothing brand and did all this. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. I feel like I'd like to meet this guy. And, so, and, then, like, and then we like did meet. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, oh, that's you. That's so funny. It's Small like, no world. Way. Small cool. world. It was, it's so crazy. I know. It's just, it's crazy how those things work. It is. It really um, is. But yeah, I guess uh, closing message going back to that, like kind of like what I touched on before. I mean, like, and it's what you guys preach all the time. Like um, just doing what makes you happy, like going Mm. after what it is you're passionate about, figuring out what purpose you have and what you have to offer and, and, you know, just really having fun with it, not trying to overcomplicate everything. Mm. Um, I mean, not everyone's perfect. I'm guilty of overcomplicating stuff quite a bit, but like he just learned it's just so much fun to just be more just simple and Mm -hmm. just like, Hey, I think it'd be cool to go out here. Like I don't have many concrete plans. I got these rough plans, Mm -hmm. but Sure, I'll, you know, right. and like, I, you know, it's like that West Virginia story. Like, I didn't, I totally didn't plan on 
you know, getting drinks with a dude with a muffin yeah. apron that yeah. night or any, but those are like, uh, that was seriously like the highlight of the trip. Like, like it's no just all those things you don't yeah. expect yeah. to do. I mean, like, so I guess, you know, it's just to be open to new experiences and just like, I think it's the most dangerous thing in the world, you know, to be stagnant, but also just like to tell yourself you can't do something mm. or just like shut your mind off it right. too completely. Cause I've talked to so many people like, you know, I'd travel, but like, Oh, it's too expensive or like it's, or they make the, the ex- right. these excuses oh, yeah, or like, or I just don't have the time or like, you know, I just don't even know where to start and everything. It's like, Honestly, just just dive in and wing it. <laughs> like, yeah, honestly, that's like, way. like that's seriously the best way to just figure out or do anything. Like, mm-hmm. um, as long as you don't have those expectations and aren't hard on yourself, like it's just like, because yeah, I mean, looking back on those trips, you know, I, I'm just like looking. I was like, oh shoot, we were right by this park, and like, you know, and and we could have stopped there or did this. Yep. And like, one way to look at it is to be like, dang, you know, I should have planned this better. I should have done all this. But one way, to, but the other way to look at it, which is how I like to do, is like. Hey, that gives me a reason to go back. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and, and, you know, it's, it's just all about like training your mind to think more like that instead of thinking, you know, cause Joel and I talk about this all the time. My brother is, um, and I've actually gotten really good about, um, about doing this and he's kind of turned me toward this too. Like, and I think we've talked about it previously too, like the power of energy of mm. just like, you know, it's, it's dangerous to say like, you know, I, never do this or I always do this right. or like this, you can't do this. Being or, absolute. Yeah, so. exactly. Like you can't be absolute with things. And we've, you know, I don't, I don't want to say like definitely or, or that, but like for the most part, I mean, we've, we've gotten that out of our vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Like we don't say anything like That's that good. anymore. Mm-hmm. And like, um, because as soon as you do, as soon as you say like, I can't afford it, what you're doing is you're shutting your mind off to the possibility of ever doing it. Yep. So you're like, well, I can't afford it. So then you just dismiss the idea. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, and, and yeah, I, I guess that's what, what I'm hope. That's the thing that I'm, I hope I'm inspiring in people is just that like showing you how possible it really is. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm definitely not rich by any means. I get no extra vacation time than what a standard job offers. Mm-hmm. But like, I make the most of it. Like I'll, you know, You're I'll not, take okay, like, a you might not be off. rich financially, but I think rich is a very abstract term. It is. What yeah. rich in life experiences, right. you know? Right. Yeah. Oh, I'd definitely. say you're very rich in life experience, you know? Well, thank that's, you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that's, and yeah, it, it just makes you more well-rounded. And like, I've read tons of like articles that I like, you know, praise on it that basically say, you know, spend your money on experiences, mm. not material possessions. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's so true because like, you know, the best memories I have, come from these experiences and these trips I've gone on. And it's, it's funny because, um, and the best analogy to describe it is like someone who's like, they did it. Yeah. (laughs) We still got our, we still got our audio. We're good. Okay. 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 okay, Anyway. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) the people who like, you know, they get like a, you know, a quad or a jet ski or something. And then they're like, Oh, you know, that's, that's really cool. And they're really happy for the short term, but then they're looking at it every day and they're like, why did I buy that? Or like, I don't even use it. Like, and it just like, you know, that was money well spent or whatever. And they like get frustrated whenever they see it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you'll never really meet a person that like goes on a a trip to like Hawaii or California or does all that. And then they recollect on that later. Like, man, I shouldn't have gone on that. trip. Right. Mm -hmm. You never, yeah. I mean, Sorry, not never. Uh, yeah. You rarely hear somebody <laughs> yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> uh, so I mean, and and yeah, like it's just uh, that's really what it's all about. Like, um, you know, I get so inspired by stuff like that. Like, I've been watching the shows on Netflix, like Anthony Bourdain and stuff mm. like that, where he'll just like travel and just like see he and that's that's a huge inspiration for me. And it's you know, unfortunate of his passing mm-hmm. and everything, but like he combines his love for like traveling, exploring and doing new ideas with his love and his knowledge of food. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he'll like, and he'll Good incorporate balance. that into his, yep. his travels. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what's so cool about it. And it's just like, I mean, cause you can really make a trip and out of anything. Yep. I mean, I just use marathons cause it's what I know and it's mm-hmm. what I enjoy doing. Yep. But like, you know, you can travel, you know, like, um, you know, you can go to the parks, you can hit up the, um, the eateries, or you can go to the museums, yep. you could go to, I mean, the options are, never ending Mm -hmm. i mean honestly Mm -hmm. like um so yeah instead of just you know shutting yourself off to the mind or shutting your mind off to the idea of like i can't do this or like you know just like think about what would be just cool to do Mm -hmm. and just like figure out a way to make it happen Mm -hmm. you know and i like the experience over material objects Mm -hmm. there's like a quote and song you can't take a u-haul to your grave 
you know? No, yeah, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny because, um, have you guys ever read Purpose Driven Life Mm-mm. or heard of it? It's, so like, it's, it's a very religious book, definitely, you know, very Christian based, but it's got a lot of like cool, like, um, points that they bring up on it, you know, about finding your purpose in mm. life and finding what you need to do. And like one of my favorite, um, parts of that book, it's, it's, um, talking about, it's more so on like relations with people and everything and, and focusing on that as opposed to material possessions. But there's one quote in it I just love when, uh, say you, you won't really hear somebody on their deathbed say like, you know, bring in my diplomas. I want to see them again. Yeah. You know, they yeah. say like, bring in my family, bring, yeah. bring in my yeah. loved ones. I want to like see them again or I want to talk to them. Yeah. And like, true. yeah. And it's so true. Like those things, you know, that's, they're not eternal. Like you can't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you can't mm-hmm. bring you all to your grave. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah. So it's all about just the experiences, meeting people and, mm. Yeah. And it's, it's inspiring. It really is. Like it, it still blows my mind, all the people I meet and do all this. And then like that we'll still stay connected or we'll like, I'll keep up with their travels and their journeys and stuff. And it's like crazy. Cause it's like, I met them, you know, sitting in a hotel in Boston, like mm-hmm. after my marathon, or I met them at a random bar in West Virginia and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we'll still like randomly talk and do all that. Um, <laughs> and it's funny cause one of my closest friends who like, uh, who I'm seeing out in uh, Henderson when I go out there in Nevada. I literally met swiping on Bumble like, on, on, <laughs> nice. on a trip. That's literally how we nice. met, but she's one of my best friends. That's, That's awesome. Cool. It's, it's, it's so weird how That's those awesome. things work. That is. That is. You know what I mean? Dude, you can't plan it. Yeah. You, you can't. Like, it was just like, I was just, I don't know, it was just <laughs> swiping on those apps, just whatever and everything. And then, like, I was like, oh, this person's actually like, really cool and stuff. And then we, like, continue to talk. And we That's literally incredible. talk, like, every day. Really? It's weird. That's yeah. She, like, she has a boyfriend and everything and all this, but, like, it's it's not even about that. Like, she's honestly just, like, one of my best friends. Right. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. It's so yep. bizarre how that works. It is. It's crazy. No. And, like, going back to the experiences thing, and Tyler and I have talked about this, but what I think it really comes down to in life is kind of just three things that what I've narrowed it down to is experiences, perspective, and stories. Oh, definitely. And I think if you have those three things and you live for those three things, mm-hmm. I think you'll live a very fulfilled life. Oh, definitely. Just live for experiences, and your experiences shape your perspective on life. Mm-hmm. And the only thing you really have at the end of the, the day is stories. Your, your stories yep. that you yeah. share with people, like your legacy and how people interacted with you and what you just did throughout your life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. And, and yeah, and, and it's... It's so funny. Yeah. Cause thinking back to it, that's, that's really like things that bring joy to me and things that make me happy are thinking about all these traveling stories Mm. and these interactions with people and all the people I've met. Like it's, yeah. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Just how I feel like important that is to self growth and understanding Mm. yourself is to really just like become well-rounded, like, you know, embrace new experiences, Mm -hmm. new people. And like, just, just, I don't know, just be warm and welcoming and just, uh, and just, actually take the time to listen, Mm -hmm. you know, which is something, you know, it's, it's definitely not easy to do. Like, cause we get trapped with, you know, internal noise and everything. We Mm -hmm. get thinking about our own problems, our own struggles, or like, you know, our to-do list of things or what we have to do. And we get bogged in by that, but to actually like sit down and listen and talk to another individual and like see their side of the story, be present. Yeah. It's, it's so much like easier said than done because it's, it's, but it's so rewarding (laughs) if you can get those brief glimpses yep. of that like it's, it's and that's fantastic. what we've talked about what we like about this which is really cool is like we yeah. get to have a two hour plus conversation when we're not on our phones and don't have the distractions yeah. long, of text or yeah, exactly. yeah. social media notifications and all that stuff oh for sure you really don't get that in life yeah it's kind of hard to find that yep yeah and to be able to have this format and be able to do this it's it's super cool and connect with people and have deep and meaningful conversations it's oh, fun, definitely you know i know it really is like and that's something i've been learning so much lately, like, uh, cause I spend, I spend my whole day, you know, like eight and a half hours, nine hours of the day, the work day, um, and a computer answering emails and everything. And like, um, and yeah, I mean, like it's essential to my job and everything. And like, it's it, but like when I get home, that's like the last thing I do. Like I put my phone away, I right. do all this and I like escape for a little bit mm-hmm. cause I kind of need the refresher Mm -hmm. on that and it's and and i do it so much more now i think because um you know when i when i go out to like dinner with people or like like i'll purposely take my phone and put it somewhere else i put it in a drawer put it away like out of sight out of mind and i'll sit and i'll talk with people Mm -hmm. and it's just it's yeah it's so much better that way i feel like because um 
Yeah, it gets it's, really it's, it's a lost the, art. It really yeah. is. Yep. Like it's it's sad because yeah, I mean the studies even show like a lot of the newer generations they really don't know how to pick up on social cues or talk to people <laughs> yeah, or geez. do anything like that. It's it's yeah, it's it's a totally different generation. It's just a lost thing to actually have an interpersonal commu- you know, yeah. have interpersonal communication with another person. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And oh, it's crazy. Like uh so yeah, it's you know, it's it's very important. Mm. Um so yeah, I know it's crazy. And and yeah, you touched on it all there. Like the traveling and the experiences definitely mm-hmm. shape your perspective and make you who you are. So 100%. It's, yeah. Well, I think uh, I just want to, and we don't have to dive into this, but I think it's a cool quote yeah. and I'm pretty sure it's yours off of your blog. <laughs> I think you came up with it and I think this would be good for people to ponder on. The fountain of youth has existed all along. It's just up to us. And if we want to bask in the waters of new adventure and exploration. Did, oh, you, yeah. did you come up with that? I actually did, yeah. yeah I, uh, I think that's super that's a cool. Very cool quote. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Like, um, and it's funny because uh it's and I th- I thought I, I had a Benjamin Franklin quote in mm-hmm. mind when I was kind of writing that one. I, I wrote down your Benjamin Franklin quote quote too about okay. most, most people die at 25 yeah I exactly love that quote. it's a great quote like like joel says it all the time my brother like um it's very true it's it's true though yep. like and it and it's it's so crazy because i've met individuals who are younger than me even who are just like they shut their mind off for things like oh i'm old or yep. like all this or like um or they just don't really travel much they don't really do much they just get it wrapped up in their heads that you mm-hmm. know they're old or they just have other things going on but like and literally I touch on that story. Like, I mean, this lady had to be like 60 or 70 mm. and she's like with walking sticks, like yeah. doing a very intense hike, yeah. like coming back from it. Mm-hmm. Like clearly went there and stuff. And like, it really is all just mentality. Yep. I mean, um, I just went, got back from a family reunion. Um, <laughs> like, uh, my aunt Betty, um, she, she's 88 and you would not think it. Mm. She's very, you know, She's very sharp, still very with it, you know, moves around and everything just fine. And I don't think I've ever heard her once say she's old. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it's yeah. really oh, yeah, just man. a state of mind. Yeah, it's mindset. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's so weird. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's insane. I think like, it's a uh, very cool quote, though. I like Thank that you. Yeah. That's yep. very cool. Yeah, I, like I mean, it's, I feel like it's so true, though. Like, um, it's just, and uh, I think I touched on it a little earlier, too, which made me segue into that as well. Like, I can't remember the exact quote and I kind of paraphrased it in there, but it was mm-hmm. essentially like the idea they, they compared people to like these different trees. Like, oh, yep. yeah. Like and how like, tree it's not, something. yeah, it's, it's, it's when a tree's like stiff and unwilling to change and everything that's when it's old right. is because it's, it's, you know, it's not flexible anymore. Yeah. It's not moving. It's very stationary. And that's essentially what makes it old and what separates, you know, someone who, who's old from someone who continues to be young. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. No, it's so true. I mean, it's just long story short, the mind is a very powerful tool <laughs> and you can use more. it literally to like, you know, make your wildest dreams come true or you can use it to destroy you. I mean, it's mm. totally mm. up to us what you do yeah. with your mental capacity. It's hundred percent true. Juxtapose journeys. Oh yeah. That's the we'll blog. That. And then Eric, no beard on Instagram, follow him, check <laughs> out his blog and uh, keep up to date with his journey. Yeah, dude. I Absolutely. don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. Eric, thank you for your time. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. Uh, thanks, yeah, yeah on, thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, seriously. This is a blast. So we need to kick it more often. Yes. We do. We do. Dude. No, for sure. Like, um, uh, it's it's funny because uh, I've been trying to get back into the habit of of using this and everything, but I have like this little notebook thing, mm-hmm. this little pocket notebook thing that yeah. like Joel got me, and um, he started using one himself, but he was just like you know, one thing that just made him smile that day or one thing that made him happy, like write in that book yep. and then just like recap yep. on it later and everything. And I was just like, and I was like, man, I need to find my book. Cause literally when you like reached out to me to like do this and stuff, I was like, man, I was like, that just made my day. Like I was like, yeah. all right, <laughs> add it to the notebook. Dude, like, for sure. Well, we're happy to have you and, yeah. uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some beers. Yeah, oh, definitely. Beers. Yeah. We'll get Joel down here and we'll, oh, for sure. uh, there we go. go out yes. for oh, Nail yeah. Detroit. That's what we need. Oh no, definitely. For sure. Whenever I like bring you up to Joel, he's, like, he's just like, he's like, oh yeah. Like he's like, Kenny gets it. Like we need to hang out. Yeah. Like, 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 it's, yeah. it's great. For sure, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks yeah. again. Oh, yep. for sure, man. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All episodes of What's Your Screw are available on iTunes. And if you like the show, be sure to rate, subscribe, and leave a comment. As always, there are free stickers on our website, www.screwco.com. We'll see you.
see you guys next time.